story so strange in its implications that it defies ordinary classification. I don't care if you've been waiting for July all year. If you up, smash that like button. Welcome to Black and Black Times Infinity. I'm your host, the Thulu's Party, coming to you live and direct from the Beast of Smoke Beyond Family, all the Dankers and Dank Jet on my left. The oldest engine in the world, old ninja. Back once again with the ill behavior. Mm. On my far right, engineering on the ones and twos, choking people out on threes and fours, chronos. Affirmative action. Are you mad or not? <laughs> Last but not least, we got your boy Blue. I survived the 4th of July. Goddamn fireworks were insane. <laughs> Local fireworks. Did you set off any? Hell no. Got any fingers? <laughs> Let's, go see to jail. Let's see the fingers. You got them all? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> all them digits. It's all, all mine. Oh, all right. I cannot hear blue. You can't hear blue? Goddamn, you always oh. can't hear one of us. Yeah, one of you, I can't hear. Blue, can you talk again? Testing, one, two, one, two. I'm you still hear? here. You couldn't hear that? I'm, I'm black and I'm proud. I, <laughs> everybody else none, can. That's quite strange. None, none yet. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay. Well, we'll we'll work it out. Last week it was me that you couldn't hear. I think. Yeah. Uh, you might have to like reconnect because it's definitely. Well, let me check yours. As I'm I can, Yeah, this. I can hear everybody pretty loud and clear. I cannot hear blue. You want to try uh, coming yeah. back in? I'll even come back Oops. real quick. All, All right. good. Cronus, what you got for some statistical analysis of some sort? Oh, real quick for stats. Um, first of all, hello, Twitch. I'm doing a multi-stream on Twitch and uh, YouTube. So if you ever watch Old Ninja or anybody else other than me <laughs> play on Twitch, um, we, we do a podcast, and this is our normal podcast. So if you're not in the podcast, you can just go to the next thing. We start gaming, but uh, this is what we normally do. is this podcast every Wednesday at 830 and I uh, hope you enjoyed all the gaming that everybody else does on Twitch. And I hope you enjoy this podcast. So, Can they comment uh, and uh, all that stuff on Twitch as well? Yes, they should be able to. Okay, and you can see it in real time? Uh, yeah, but it's kind of weird. Okay. Because there's like a multi-stream. This is, yeah. Let me see if I can jump, I'm going to see if I can jump on Twitch and jump in the chat. Yeah, see, see how it looks. I don't know how it looks on the Twitch end. Um, good shit, good shit. All right, uh, first in the chat would be Warrior Fellow, and he's asking, are you guys live on Twitch right now? Yes, Warrior Fellow. So however you want to digest this on Twitch or on YouTube, do it. But I guess we're monetized on YouTube most of the time. So <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how it works with Twitch. Um, Proceed. And listener of the week would be Tulk at S. All right. One more time. Tulk, T-U-L-K, at S. Okay. Hope Sound I said that like right. a legit, legit person. Uh, old Ninja usually pours out something malty and beveragey and brownie and whatever, but he is uh, trying to figure out his technical difficulties. So we back up in this motherfucker. What, where y'all want to go first? Goddamn, there's so much going on. It's a lot that happened over the past uh, past week. A lot of Supreme Court shit that happened over the past week. But should mm-hmm. we start something with something a little happier, or should we? Uh... I mean, we ne- we never. It seems like we never go happy first. Let's go happy first. Yeah, let's go happy first. What 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 happiness happened over the past week? I mean, we had the fourth. Did y'all do anything for the fourth? Uh, what did I do? I grilled a little bit. Big green egg. Nice. Um, <laughs> some fucking yard work and just relaxing. Really, yesterday I didn't I didn't do a shit on shit. What about you guys? Well, the live feed looks really good on Twitch, but uh, oh, really? it's. It uh, it shows that we're playing Call of Duty. Oh, we're Modern definitely not playing right Call of Duty. What the fuck? <laughs> but it's, it it is live. It's hmm. cool. There's somebody in the chat. I'll have to check and make sure um to change it. The name I thought was changed, but I guess not. Okay. We're reaching one person. So shout out to that one person. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is our first time doing it on Twitch. Yeah, yeah. They're probably like, "This ain't no modern modern warfare. This is modern life." It is not. So sorry, I didn't know why the name got messed up. Uh, I think you got to lo- manually switch it up or I, na- rename it. It didn't say that when I uh, started the stream. So if you can log mm-hmm. into Twitch and, and change it, feel free. Okay. Um, what was I going to say? Fourth of July. In modern warfare. I, you know, I, I wonder if uh, this Fourth of July. I, I, I feel like if I did like a poll, if like less black people participated in Fourth of July this year. Like did the thing, like you know, went to go see fireworks and did the tr- the traditional like Fourth of July thing because we got we got Juneteenth this year. 
Yeah. Now, was this year one or was this year two for June Tooth? I can't remember now. I'm all fuzzy. It was the first year that we got the day off, I'm pretty sure. Okay. So it was the first, like, national holiday, even though some places still don't don't celebrate it. But, you know, um, I yeah, I didn't really f- – I, maybe I sound unpatriotic, but I didn't feel the need to even go look at fireworks this year. I'm, so I'm getting echo, echo. Are from, you guys? From me? No. Yeah. Yeah, I am too. You are too? From me or everybody? I got it from you, Kronos. Okay. I should not be echoing. I don't hear it on my end. Um, I, I don't actually, I don't hear an echo from Kronos, but I hear an echo from uh, Oninja. Oninja's not even okay. here, so that's funny. Yeah, okay. Oh, wait. Yeah. Oh. Hold on, hold on. He is. God damn it. God damn it. There we go. I have one. Oninja? Yeah. Okay. Now I hear an echo from Kronos. Yeah, I hear too. Is... I heard it for a second, but now it's gone. Yeah, it's gone now. I can't. I can't hear any. Oh, I can't hear blue still. You still can't. So, I don't yeah. know what's up with that. I heard it for a second, and then his his feed like dipped out, like he lost connection or something. Yeah, they. But I Kronos changed had... the stream name on Twitch because I'm looking at the Twitch chat, so nobody's there yet. It's all right. All right, we'll work it out. Keep keep going. Uh, so yeah, I didn't feel the need to like go look at fireworks or anything like that. Um, sorry if it sounds unpatriotic, but. You know, I, I feel like uh, Independence Day it was for a certain demographic of people for for the July, and it, and it wasn't me and my people. So I'm going to try to figure out something that I can do on, on Juneteenth to, to properly celebrate that holiday going forward. Yeah, I, I don't know why people – no, I do know why, but people need to really get over the whole thing of being butthurt about, oh, you you shouldn't ever criticize – anything about America's history, get the fuck out of here. You know, <laughs> it's, just so, it's so stupid. It's this weird ostrich syndrome, you know. Um, terrible, terrible shit has happened. You not knowing about it is just ignorance, you know. Um, but yeah, I'm all for Juneteenth. I'm glad I got national recognition. Um, I don't have any problem eating, you know, something off the grill on 4th of July. I'll take another day off. It is what it is. But yeah, just celebrating slave owners, dead slave owners, isn't isn't awesome. Yeah. Period. Yeah. yeah, I really don't understand why Old Ninja can't see or can't hear blue. Everything is the same. They're all on the same all on the same channel. I'm, I'm talking now. Yeah, probably. All right. Hey guys, Good. we Set. we have a visitor. Success. No, it's bedtime. <laughs> it's bedtime. <laughs> you can't hear us, though. Yeah, it's nighttime. Want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hi. <laughs> Good is, stuff, is it his bedtime? Yeah. Was he was he up all late uh, with all the fireworks yesterday? Not too bad. Uh, we had we had a sound machine turned up, so it didn't really bother him. But the the fireworks <laughs> they bothered. They bothered me and the dogs, and they were just barking all night long. So it was it was a, it was a rough night. And then he woke up like at three in the morning because he was hungry. So yeah, it was Holy last night wasn't very very fun. But I think next year we'll probably take him to actually go see the fireworks, just because you know fireworks are pretty loud and like that kind of a a high uh, stimulant, like visual stimulant for a little kid. So you don't want him to get all like scared and stuff so we're gonna wait till next year to actually take them to actually see fireworks maybe we just watch like, them on tv could also go to like a drone show yeah i don't, I don't know if there's any in the in california or at least in the bay area you should look because i mean there, there were some down here there should be some up there Dro- drone shows the drone works yeah drones not the kind of kill people because that'd be i mean that'd be american as fuck but you know. I, heard you guys, I heard you guys got the donkey show down there, though. Oh, and that's in TJ. We got the they got the donkey show down there. <laughs> it's the the donkey painted like a zebra. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, a zebra. Fucking donkeys. You know what the worst thing? Uh, I, I know this is really really a local story, but like Imperial Beach gets really scuzzy and nasty with like nasty bacteria in the water and whatnot. A lot of people blame TJ and the water treatment and all that. I get it. Uh, and that's the southernmost beach uh, in uh, California and then San Diego County. So they opened that shit up for 4th of July, obviously for economic reasons, but they didn't say that. 
And then the very next day, they were like, surprise, surprise. We got to close this shit. This shit is too fucking toxic and nasty. Yeah. And like, guess what? <laughs> if you're in the water, now you got herpes. All right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, you motherfuckers. Well, the, the problem is that in, in TJ, they don't, um, they don't treat their water yeah. before they dump it in the ocean. So, Well, there, there's that. But then I'm also not going to let San Diego off the hook either. Because during all the rain that we got in February, March, and April, even in the northern and middle, middle part of the county, raw sewage from San Diego was going yeah. into the water yeah. too. So yeah, everybody likes to shit on shit on TJ and, and hygiene and whatnot. And a lot of that is true, but there's some nasty shit on our beaches. Like we don't take care of them very well down here. Yeah. People in general are kind of gross. Yeah. All right. So we all good with all the technical stuff. We good. Well, except for old ninja. I mean, you're still there, right? Old ninja. And turn your cam off again. I can see him. You can see, I can him. see him too. That's fucking weird. I can't see him. Hmm. Oh wait, you hey, you there? Who's hey? You? Yeah, yeah, I'm here. I've been here. Okay, sorry. Like you, I think you dropped and came back, and I, I did. Got, yeah, I got to get used to like this system because like when you drop and come back, it it doesn't notify me. The only oh. thing it does, <laughs> it gives me like just this little like, it looks like a Wi-Fi meter that tells me that you're on, oh. but I have to like click on you. And then put show on stream. If I don't do that, I can't hear you or see you. Oh wow! Now the question is, can you hear me still? Yeah, I can hear you. I just can't. Okay. I can't see you. You're frozen, but I can hear you. Okay, as long as you can hear him, that's the important <clears throat> part. All right, old ninja. Do you have anything you pouring out? No, I didn't get a chance to, and I didn't see any huge news about anybody. Just some, did I miss somebody? I don't I mean, think nobody, so. Yeah, nobody that. Um, I'm pretty sure we covered. I, I missed like the last two that I was on. I didn't finish. I didn't finish one of them, so I gotta go back and see if we covered all of them. So all right, okay. yeah. all right. So, so I think where where were we starting with some good news, or was it for was the Fourth of July that Fourth isn't July necessarily good always good news? I mean, it's, it's good news for most of America. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And also, America. you know, yesterday for Fourth of July, um, actually before that, um, on the third. Um, Papa Bear started a live stream for 24 hours for to, for auctions for rescue residents, and it went went pretty well, um, especially given like the amount of uh, footprint that we have right now. I, I think it went ra rather well. We people won some some auctions. Um, that was pretty neat. Not everything sold, but I think we're going to do something uh, about that. I'll talk to talk to him about it. But um, yeah, it was pretty neat. Like I, I hopped on there for about an hour and talked about uh, my mother in law's uh, print that she sent over. It was a really cool lion. Um, that, that she sent over for, for donation for auction. And there's a whole bunch of other cool stuff. I, I bet on like a knife, so I need to see how that's going. Um, but yeah, that was a pretty cool like 4th of July thing for uh, for rescue residents. Good stuff, good stuff. Old Ninja, what'd you get into? Uh, I just saw some family. Unfortunately, mostly everyone had to work. So I kind of just stuck at home and Heard a lot of local fireworks. Saw a couple local fireworks, but uh, that was about it. Nothing it's kind of weird being on a Tuesday. It's weird being on a I'm, fucking Tuesday for a lot of people. Yeah, yeah. Everyone, everyone went back to work today, yeah. even though they had Monday off. So. Yeah. Well, I, I had Monday off. I'm sorry. No, I, I worked. I worked Sunday. Worked Monday. I was off yesterday. Then I worked today. Yeah, that's weird. That's trippy. But it is what it is. We'll take the day. Um. Okay, so shit. What do you, I know? We talked about that bullshit with obviously the Flash and all that shit. Um, it's still fucking tanking. They took yeah. it out of the theaters already. <laughs> mm -hmm. They already took it out of the theaters. Yeah, exactly. So, I, I saw yeah. one. I saw some shit where it was buy one get one free on your fucking ticket. Yeah, I thought yeah. it too. <laughs> uh, damn. But it's gonna That's, be it's, it's gonna be on each or uh, max. On July 18th, 20th, something like that. The 18th. Was it 18th? Yeah. Damn, that's like the week after next. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's, that's like, what is, I don't even remember when the movie came out. Like, it probably had to be at least like three or four weeks. Probably made it a little bit more longer than a month. But the, yeah. The really, the really sad thing is, he's such a fucking great character. I mean, even on the CW, you got, like, with a micro budget, you got the sense of how cool the fucking character is. And, you know, obviously they're going to have to wait. They're going to have to. Uh, revisit it years later, but he, he's always been a really fucking cool character with a great rogues gallery, like we keep mentioning. But it is what it is. 
Yeah. I mean, yeah. You say you say he has a great rose gallery. I, he I does. That's not even debatable. Yeah, he does. Yeah. I mean, obviously, when I think of rose galleries, and most comic fans, they think of Spider Man and Batman. One and two, obviously debatable. Who's one? Who's two? I think Batman first, Spider Man second, but whatever. Mm -hmm. um, Superman has a decent one, but Flash is certainly up there. I, I would say bare minimum top five for solo mm -hmm. comic book characters. So uh, the problem with uh, with Batman and Superman or Batman and Spider Man, most people know their villains by name. Like if you ask someone a Flash villain. You might get one if you're lucky. Yeah, but wouldn't you say that that's a function of, hey, in 2023, he finally got his first solo movie and it didn't even have any of the fucking rogues gallery in it? <laughs> no, it didn't. And he didn't have his own it, it, back in the 90s and 80s. He never had his own cartoon. He had a, a short lived CBS live action show. And then, of course, the CW one. Yeah, but he hadn't had done a, enough with him. But the thing is, over those generations, like decades long generations of comics, his Rose Gallery is still relatively unknown to the general public. Everybody well, knows who the fuck the Joker is or Lex Luthor. Oh, that's because of the movies, man. That's, that's what, you know, probably you were just saying. Movie, but it's, it's also, I mean, they're pretty popular comics as well. well I would yeah, say but, Batman and Superman are more popular than the Flash comic. Well, I mean, if you could look on like CBR, right? Uh, CBR.com's comic reader. The, it, the Flash is number four on the Rose Gallery, like like top, top Rose Gallery. The only ones that beat. That beat him. They're, he's actually ahead of Superman for Rogue's mm -hmm. Gallery. And the the other, you know, rounding out the top four, it's you know, it's the it's the Flash number four, the X Men number three, Spider Man number two, and then of course Batman number one. So, oh, so they put the X Men as a group as number three. Yes, that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, yeah, I, mean, I can see gallery. it. <laughs> I mean, the X Men with Magneto, yeah. with Mystique, Emma Frost. Yeah. Apocalypse. I mean, they, they've got teams of people, you know, Genosha, yeah. the Sentinels, you know, Sabretooth. So, yeah. But there's, yeah, but I was going to say a lot of these solo X Men uh, villains have fans of their own. Like, there's a ton of fans of, like, even the Silver Samurai, uh, Sabretooth, like Prodigy said, Magneto. He's a, he's a huge, his, one of his biggest fans we know is Stitch. Mm -hmm. Stitch is a huge Magneto fan. Um, also, uh, Mystique has a huge like list of fans. You know, some of their fans out. You know, out list some of these other characters out there. So I get it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th again, like I said, I, definitely top five. He, he's definitely up there. I mean, Reverse Flash alone is a fucking superstar if you yeah. showcased it right. So it, it, it's a fucking shame. Um, we'll see. We'll see what the fuck happens, but. You know, I, I'm I'm hearing a whole lot of fucking financial trouble and them trying to sell off some assets and shit. Like, for example, I think I posted in the chat this week, um, HBO series like Insecure oh, yeah. and a handful of others. I didn't see like The Last of Us or anything like that, but definitely Insecure are going over to Netflix. Netflix, and, yeah. Yeah, and going to be showcased there. But I mean that's kind of cool just because for the for the consumer just because you you get a chance to watch these shows that are mainly on HBO. But like there's like um, there's movies that are on both Disney Plus and HBO Max. Like mm -hmm. uh, like uh, the new Avatar movie that's on both platforms as well as uh, the Spider Man's movies, uh, like the Tobey Maguire ones are on uh, Disney Plus and on Netflix. So it's 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 cool on that end, but like yeah, some somebody's leaking money, so they need to, or somebody's bleeding money, so they need to patch that up by by giving out some of their assets, get some extra revenue coming in. Yeah, because I mean, HBO's claim to fame for all these decades and decades, where, where they had Sopranos, Band of Brothers, Sex in the City, all of those good shit, uh, was hey, we're not traditional TV. You obviously pay for it, but there's going to be that new hotness on here every every year or so. You know what I mean? That that must watch shit and it's going to always be on only our channel that's i mean usually what they had said but i mean even with uh what was it sex in the city was, had like a super watered down censored uh tnt or tbs series see like, it's on it's, it's on the cw and i think it was yeah maybe the carrie diaries which is the prequel series to sex in the city so because it's a cbs 
uh, Warner Brothers show. It's on. It's on CWC. Like oh, that's okay. what you can watch it now. So and you can watch it free. You can watch it free right now. So yeah, I, I never quite got the whole seed stuff, but. Yeah, no. and, but there's a that's sequel series. No that's why. I mean, we all get yeah. it. Oh, <laughs> dude, <she's nice. laughs> oh, that's what we do. Uh, but the sequel, uh, what was it? The sequel series is on Max. So okay, we 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 will see. Um, I would love to see something funny like uh, Harley Quinn get a, a wider audience. You know? Yeah, Harley, like Quinn. Cool. Harley Quinn's an amazing show. So yeah, but then again. Uh, yeah, it should be able to be on HBO. I can't see it on on Netflix because it's it's definitely R rated, and oh, Netflix yeah. does have that that content on their platform. Absolutely. Oh, what what they need is Spawn, the animated series on Netflix. That'd be dope. I forgot about that one. That, that, was, was, that was that was good. That was fucking really good. Uh, I I don't think they're ready for uh, something like Oz though. <laughs> I wasn't ready. Why the Why the fuck was I watching Oz at such a young goddamn age? That shit was way too That's fucking what, I was crazy. Oz when we were adults. What are you talking about? Were we weren't we like barely adults at eighteen nineteen? I mean, yeah, but you know <laughs> adult enough. That shit was still too wild, man. That was a whole lot of fucking rape scenes. That there was. That was not <laughs> I, I, I started watching that shit when I was in Iraq and I was like, whoa, like they're they're going all the way there. Like <laughs> Yep. There's a whole lot of raping. Um here's Ooh. what here's I'm what I want to go into real quick. What? I'm a warrior. Well booty warrior. <laughs> Yo, I'm a warrior. Um, when did Oz come out? Uh, Kronos, are you still playing any Diablo Four? Yes, or, I'm not playing it as, around as it? often as I want to, but yeah, I'm still playing. It. I'm like level forty-four, forty-five Necro. Okay. Um, there's a whole lot. I will give Blizzard some props. There's a whole lot of in-game content. Like it, it just doesn't fucking stop, and it's right there in the forefront. I went to what was it on? Monday or Sunday, I got to World Tier Three and beat like the regular campaign. I was like, "Oh, it opens up all this Paragon shit, opens up all this yeah. uh, PvP, and opens up all these other different modes and shit." So I give them props for having so much fucking content at launch. That's fucking cool. But um, at the same time, I still feel like I need to either try your class of Necro or fucking I want to try Rogue too. Because have you, have you played with any rogues at all? No, I've just I only played Necro. And what I like about the the Necromancer is that even if you don't like doing the the semi micromanagement of the um, of all your minions, you can just basically forego them for like significant perks to like your physical Ooh. and like magical being. Because like one of the things that kind of sucks about playing as a Necromancer with like all the minions. So like right now, I basically have control of what eleven or twelve minions at one time. But because I use one of them that's like this gigantic like Hulk thing, like it basically takes up a whole magic slot. Mm. And then so does, um, so does like just like bringing minions to life. Like it takes, takes up another like, like skill slot. So those are two skills that I can't use for like anything else, you know? It. So it's like it makes your, your play style diversity like kind of limited. So like basically I can only use what I think like maybe four, <laughs> like, other than basic, you know, movements and yeah, but yeah, you, you, I mean, you obviously like I'm, I'm maxing them out, but um, it, it can be very limiting to your, to your play style. Or like I said, you can just go through when you go through your book of the dead and just like forego all that shit and get like significant perks to uh, to the, your stats. The, the thing that fucked me up, I didn't realize because I got I don't know maybe twenty thirty of those statues of Lilith. There's like a hundred plus of those. Yeah, yeah. And you can get a whole bunch of fucking perks on top of that. And then it took me a while to figure out the whole thing with the um, the dungeons that are class specific perks. Yeah. But my question is, do they automatically go on your character, or do you have to assign them somewhere? I'm still confused by that. So the those like things that you get, they're like um, they're basically like attachments to like your weapons and armor. So you know you have like slots for your weapons and armor. Yeah. So that you have to go to like the occultist. I think it's the occultist, and then you can attach those like Slayer type perks to a weapon. Or so armor. it's not automatic. No. Okay. No, no, no. You have to go through and like attach them. They, they didn't do a really good job of like explaining like the occultist and like the jeweler and like all this other shit. Um, nope. Which is fine because I mean like most people they probably don't even care about it. Um, but yeah, like when you go to the occult, I'm pretty sure it's the occultist. 
you can like take off. So when you get legendary gear or above, you know, you get like the special like perk with it. Mm -hmm. Well, you can remove that and then you can put it on something else. I, I saw that I could do that uh, over the weekend or whatever when I was playing after we talked about it, I don't know, last week or the week prior. But what trips me out is I never have the right materials. I feel like I always am like deficient and they'll tell he'll tell me, get the fuck out of here. You're too broke. Oh, you know? <laughs> so what you got to uh, do for, for materials, like what do, do you sell your stuff? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's where you're I definitely out. sell Huh? That's where you're fucking up. Stop selling shit. Like dis dismantle it at like the armor or the occultist or the jeweler or dismantle. whatever. Yeah, have them dismantle it. And that, that's how you get materials. Like I haven't bought anything in the game. Dismantle. Like, okay. Well, I, I'm sorry. I might have bought like maybe two or three things, but I don't buy armor. I don't buy weapons. I don't buy any of that shit. I just I Ooh. dismantle all of it, including all the legendary stuff. Like I'll, I'll unsocket the stuff, and if if it's something that's cool enough. I'll go to the occultist and like take the the enchantment off, but I'll I'll still dismantle it. I don't care how much it's fucking worth because you get a, a treasure trove of materials that way. Yeah, for whatever reason, and I did that a lot in in three. For whatever reason, I just it wasn't quite clicking for me. Yeah. In terms of that, because I got all this money, I got like millions of dollars of gold, but I don't have enough resources. Yeah, I don't even. And I'm have like, much. where the fuck do I farm for this? I don't think I even have like three hundred thousand gold. God damn. But I have like. Every single time I get like new good like good equipment, I'll yeah. go through and like I'll I'll um, upgrade it to like the max. Yeah, I got I got to start fucking selling or dismantling some shit. Yeah, because definitely like when you dismantle it and you upgrade it, um, upgrade like your new stuff, it really, um, especially when you get like stuff that you really like, because you know there's always like pieces of equipment that you really like, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's it's just longevity. So like the more you can upgrade it, the longer you can keep it. And then once you're done yeah. with it, you can go to the occultist and then take off the thing that you liked about it, and then put it in your inventory. And then like the next time you get like another legendary piece of gear, you can take that enchantment or whatever and put it on that. And that's where okay. like really comes into uh, effect. Because like I have these boots right now that I'm I'm not really going to get rid of probably ever until I find something that's like way better because mm -hmm. it comes like a perk of getting two extra minions um, for skeletal oh, mage, skeletal mages, and it's like that's like significant. You know, because the like it, it ups like your overall cap. And that's like two other you know dudes that are just you know laying down, covering fire for you. So it's it's, that's it's quite nice. Yeah. That's good shit. All right, I'll try to fuck around with that shit. But I will say this: that world tier is a whole different fucking level. Like even like side quests and regular ass dungeons, that shit got got hard as fuck instantly. Yeah, I so. I started at world tier two and like right, I only died like a handful of times. Um, one was like the butcher just raped me like out of nowhere. I was just like, Jesus Christ. He, he went ham. He's like, fuck you, fuck your minions. Like that yep. booty is mine. I, I could not even run out of the fucking dungeon. Nope. And he just came after me. Um, and then a couple other times it's fine. But yeah, I started at world tier two, but like right now, um, I feel like things are getting a little too easy. And so mm -hmm. once I hit level 50, I'm going to go to world tier three. Yeah, there you go. Good shit. And old ninja or blue, are you, what are you guys fucking playing? If, it any, if anything, right now. How did you? Uh, so for me, uh, I'm skipping uh, Diablo because I've never been a Diablo fan. But I started fucking around with uh, this Need for Speed Unbound. Well, that's the one that's that like, it's sort of like anime with like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's neat. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a mix between, so it's like you have your cars that are all like super pristine, like photorealistic, like, uh, Gran Turismo, Forza looking cars, but when you drive them, they'll have like anime effects when you do something cool. Like if you do, if you boost, if you uh, drift, when you drift, like anime smoke comes out the back, and then, or and if you uh, jump, if you hit a jump, you go into like what they call big air, your car gets like anime wings. <laughs> it's super weird, but like the controls and shit, it, it, like the world looks fucking cool. And it it feels like burnout all over again, but with the need for speed like anime style, like you build your character and stuff too, which I don't know how how consequential your character build is, but I mean you can if you want. Or if you're black, you get more tickets. You're saying maybe I, I don't know, <laughs> but it's it's still pretty fun. It feel it kind of has like some of the old school like. Um, burnout feel like when you crash it's like an epic crash like everything explodes and shit and so then you, like so uh you know ea bought them right Cri Cri criterion yeah they bought yeah. criterion they've had criterion for a while yeah. criterion 
supplements a lot of their like fast motion kind of I, I want to say cars and flying and kind of stuff like Criterion did like the um the, the car work for Battlefield also for um, Battlefront and uh there's some other games that Criterion worked on um also Star Wars Squadrons they worked on with Motif so they've been doing shit and they still make Need for Speed games <laughs> so it's pretty pretty intense but it's pretty it's still pretty cool it feels like a new skin on an old game kind of but there's some new there's some newness to it obviously there's like it's kind of weird cuz it, it embraces a it embraces trap culture a little bit a little bit okay. maybe too much where I'm like what the fuck is this <laughs> but it's still pretty fun they're still pretty cool as an interesting story so far I'm like barely scratching the surface on the fucking game like I'm barely I have like literally four cars and there's like probably 75 cars in the game um, the cool thing was that if you played any of the past um, Need for Speed games, I guess if you beat them or at least even booted them, like you'll get a bunch of cars gifted to you from EA. It's like, oh, thank you for playing our games. Here's the game. Here's the cards in the game. So like the cars that you beat, uh, that you earn in like the final stages of Need for Speed Most Wanted, a Need for Speed Drift, and I think, I think Payback. Even though I own Payback, I've only played a little bit. Like, you get, like, free cars. I'm like, oh, shit. They're pretty cool, too. So, and they, which also out. cool. They have the community. Um, like, they brought back the uh, the, the um, tuning as well as, like, customization. Because, like, some of them you couldn't customize in some of the older ones. So, they brought back, like, the whole Need for Speed Underground. That's like, I was going to say, Need for Speed Underground or Dub. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like that. So, you can change and decal. And the, so, they have, like, community-based stuff. We can upload your decals and upload your, um, you know, your your style for your each car, and like people can vote on it and download it for free. And you can add it to your car and then play it in the game. It's fucking dope. And then you can build your own, and upload and shit, and do what you want. You can also can, have what you have. Uh, if you, you don't want to, you can lock it down. Don't trade with anybody. Can you put them anime girls on there? <laughs> so you can build your own anime girl. Because all the characters are anime. Even no, at least no, on the car, anime. though. On the yes. car. Yes, there are anime girls on the car, but you can't. If it's deemed lewd or whatever, you'll get taken out, or you have to change it. I thought so, this was so America. No food is, no food so, is huh? Uh, sure. Yeah. No, definitely no food is. That's that's all bad. But uh, I guess Travis Scott is in the game. I think. I can't tell. He's in anime form, so he's it's like, hard to tell. He's running over. Fucking, like, he, running over. He fast. had a fucking Fortnite concert. <laughs> like years like ago, they shut that shit like down. Two, like two years ago, but yeah, I guess I guess he's in the game. It's either him or um, ASAP Rocky. I can't tell. They're, they're all here. You guys. here. You go all with last week. You confused motherfucking Tyrese for oh, goddamn yeah. Makai Pfeiffer. You always confusing yeah. black men. Yeah, they all they all all y'all look alike. <laughs> he probably he, he probably think uh oh god what's the guy's name fuck I forgot uh what's the guy from the Matrix that played uh, Morpheus. <laughs> Lawrence Fishburne? Lawrence Fishburne. Yeah, you, you probably think Lawrence Fishburne is in uh, in on, in Disney Plus uh, Invasion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Secret Invasion. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I need to get you guys to get that joke. <laughs> no, I got the joke. Yeah, I, I watched the, I watched the uh, show. Okay. I haven't watched today's episode. But Homeboy died. <laughs> Samuel Jackson was uh, what's the name? Oh, okay. Well, good. Good shit. I'm glad you liking it. Do you you never or did you ever finish the Star Wars one or you? No, I got I got frustrated, so I kind of stopped because I was getting my ass kicked. I was getting my ass kicked like badly, real bad. I'm like, fuck, I got to stop before I break this. And I really like this game, so I I've been playing a lot, a lot, a lot of Call of Duty because of their event, which ends. I think it ends in either six days or thirty days. I can't tell. There's two timers on the fucking game. I don't know which one ends. So. But there's been uh, new maps and shit, new DMZ maps, new multiplayer maps, new all kinds of shit, new characters and shit. So I've been going pretty hard on those, uh, playing with a lot of people, just doing a bunch of shit in um, in some Modern Warfare. And, like, they've got a couple new guns and shit, so I maxed them out already. They're really fun to use, so it's been fun. So there's, like, rumors, like, new events are coming, new stuff's coming to the game in, like, a week or two. So I've been all about that shit as well. Not sure. Yeah, I haven't been on Call of Duty in a minute. I did see uh, one of my favorite ones, Cold War, 
uh, was going to be the what, what was it the PlayStation Plus game of July or August? Which, which one was yeah, it? It's yeah. July, I think. So that and I think Alan Wake. Okay. Yeah, I think Alan Wake is better than would be a better investment, even though it doesn't have multiplayer. Alan Wake's a pretty fucked up game, but it's awesome. Yeah, you've been saying that for years. I'll have to finally fucking play it at some point. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, all right, where else y'all want to go? Oh, um, I got a B the BTI question for y'all. Right, right, I feel like no one's asked this, and I feel, I don't know if someone's asked this. It's hard to keep up, but I feel like no one has. Go ahead. And I think I think we need to address it. Because most of us, we were talking about this earlier in the podcast. Most of us were talking about comics and shit. But no, I don't think anyone has asked us, who's your favorite black comic character? Who are you asking first? That's I don't know. A good where one. Wants to, where wants to start I'm going to say, like, if you asked me growing up, it would have been more than likely Storm mm-hmm. from the X-Men. Um, but adult life, Black Panther, yeah. T'Challa, and I got him to him much later. But I was glad I went. I went back and read like the older older stuff from like Christopher Priest and a whole bunch of others. The old well, bunch of crossovers with not only the Avengers but Fantastic Four. I really liked most of uh, the older stuff that I read. Who you? Who y'all got? And I gotta say the same. I mean, like before, it was probably like Blade for me or Spawn. Mm. Blade or Spawn, but then um, once I started reading up on uh, on Black Panthers, like even before the movie came out, it was like when the Secret Secret Wars run of the Avengers, and like I really gained a, a really deep appreciation of uh, of T'Challa and of Wakanda, and like how how like politically charged that whole thing was, and they're going to war with uh, with Atlantis, and I thought that was pretty dope. And then I same thing with like what Prodigy did. I went back and read some of the Christopher Priest stuff, even though it doesn't age very well, <laughs> but it's still uh it's still pretty cool you know I, I i really liked it see for myself i would think earlier like chrono said like blade was kind of my kind of the first black comic character that i've seen i mean outside of storm um but she was kind of like uh i feel like they kind of didn't really have her do too much in x-man but um it was blade and also static shock static shock was my shit as a kid yeah. or as a teenager because i think that's about the time it came out but like later on in life i would probably say uh miles spider-man is up there especially with like you know the games and like his first comic coming out was he kind of was pretty cool he kind of hit the scene hit the ground running so uh yeah i'll say miles spider-man can can i just quickly say this with with miles i think he's fucking awesome there ain't no doubt about it i'm always going to remember that there was a fucking backlash to Miles Morales. Like, it, nobody t- seems to remember that now because obviously Spider Verse was great. Cross the Spider Verse was just as great, if not even better. I believe the third one is going to be, even, you know, a great trilogy. But there were people hating. And I don't mean like just a few trolls. I mean, the hatred was pretty widespread initially. You know, you know what Miles uh, Miles Spider Man comic was he was like the Ultimate Spider Man comic. Yep. It was the first black comic character I read. Hmm. And this was like later like way later on in life just because, you know, I was mainly into Batman. I wasn't really looking toward any other colored uh superhero at the time. Cause it wasn't, I mean there was some out there you but like other, you say other like Batman was black. He, he, was black, he was black to me. <laughs> I could have said Bronze Tiger or something like that. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> no, but like, I mean, most of, the, most of the characters back then, like, it was either like Black Lightning, Black Panther, like, everything started with black. <laughs> mm-hmm. Except for Green Lantern. Yeah, mm-hmm. John Stewart. That's I, a good one. Well, Green but before Lantern, Green Lantern was a white guy, big. so. And, and like, yeah. any black original character was usually black something. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, 100%. Black. Uh, before, I think. Before Black Lightning, there's Black Vulcan. Yeah, Vulcan, mm-hmm. or he, or he, was he just Vulcan? He, but he looked like Black Lightning. So. Can, can I uh, tell you something that fucking really blew my mind? If you look back in OG Teen Titans comics from oh, back yeah. in the day, so this like, was this- subtle, but I had to read a whole fucking like two or three articles on this. Starfire obviously was alien, just like Superman, obviously alien. Mm-hmm. But 
very much viewed as a quote unquote black woman alien initially. Hmm. Like, I mean, I'll have to send you it, it, and they had screenshots and all of that. If, you, if you, I'm holding up an old 90s Teen Titan cover, there's only part of them, but she's outside of Cyborg, she's like the second darkest one. Mm-hmm. So, so I get it. Yeah, I mean, and then, it was a whole thing. Well, I feel like she was like space Black Panthers, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it, there was, I hadn't thought about it until like they talked about, okay, and then here's where they changed her nose, lips, and hair. <laughs> you know what I mean? And her body, and this is what it looked like afterwards. But when you go back to, I think it was, might have been George Perez, I can't remember, but like all of the original art with her just had a look kind of like remember those old outcast uh, cd covers yeah yeah like a criminal like that yeah exactly kind of that's what she looked like like a um an alien uh i don't know nubian goddess almost <laughs> in some ways <laughs> only golder yeah. or oranger the anyway future. yeah uh so well that, for me- that makes uh, the whole what's the thing make sense with the uh, the Titan show, like her being black. I mean, because oh, yeah. it seems like Starfire was originally black. Or yeah. Which is black. But l- let me be oh, real. Yeah. Let me be real honest, too. Regardless, oh. I know not everybody loves the show. I kind of dug quite a bit of it. I haven't seen the latest season. That actress didn't deserve any of that fucking hate and fucking racist bullshit that she went through. I can't remember her name. Does anybody deserve hate and racist no. bullshit? No. <laughs> but it was. It was it was especially egregious because people weren't even like used to. I don't think I hadn't seen her in anything else. That was like a real high profile role, and it was before the show came out that she was getting all that fucking hate. Oh, I believe her name's Anna yeah, Di- Diop, and yeah, Diop. she's actually in uh, some other big name shit. Huh, yeah, what else was she in? I'm looking at the original. Uh, yeah, I mean, she definitely had fuller lips, and yeah, all right. You kind of see it now. No, like, when, when you point, when people point it out, it's like okay. Yeah, she even had like a like her nose was like African, like style nose or like like feature. Uh, yeah, in some of these stills that I'm seeing. Yeah. So, <laughs> Anna Diop is in the is in Us, the um, Jordan Poole movie. You know, I I saw that one, and I'll have to go back and watch to see what she played, which uh, character she played. Yeah, I, I think it. she plays her she's a school friend, but she's in Twenty Four Legacy, and I love Twenty Four. It's one of my best favorite ones. I didn't watch Quantico, but she's in it for a little bit. Um, yeah, she's in some stuff here and there, but yeah, I mean she she did a good job. She was talented. It fucking worked. Um, so for me, I I would say the first black um, comic character that I really got into. That I actually gave a shit about was Spawn, hundred percent. Yeah. Like, I mean, I knew of everybody else. I knew of Black Lightning, but I just didn't care. Black Panther to me, at the time, he just wasn't interesting, and everyone was like, he. Everyone acted like he was the only one. I guess this is pre John Stewart Green Lantern, so he was just like. But there are other characters that no one gave a shit, like Icon and and Mister Terrific. They, they and Black Lightning, they were around, but they weren't like. They, were, they didn't have, like, graphic novels or anything like that. And, like, I just didn't connect with anyone until, like, the big thing about Todd McFarlane was that he was joining Image Comics. He was writing Spider-Man. It was a huge deal when he was leaving Spider-Man. His artwork was a certain, you know, was a certain way that everybody was all about. And then Spawn hit the stands, and it was, like, the number one seller. Everyone was all yep. about it. And it had, like, this huge mystery about it. Then you find out very early on, I think by issue three, that he's a black dude. And everyone's freaked out. They're like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, shit, this dude's black? I'm like, oh, shit. And I was even more interested from there. And then on, I was, like, pretty much a fan. It was just crazy because I didn't know until after the fact that, like, way later, that Todd McFarlane's a white guy. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. But it's still pretty cool. Like, the story's cool. He still has, like, a legacy for being a relatively newer character. Yep. He still, he, I mean, he came out in the 90s, but he was still, he was came out swinging out the gate. And there were other characters by Image that came out that they were selling to be super huge and they fucking fizzled. Like Youngbloods, Wildcats, 
Um, Savage Dragon. So Savage Dragon, I guess, kind of, sort of. I even I I wasn't into it, but apparently it had like a pretty big following. I think there might have been a, 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 a animated series at one point, but I didn't give a shit. It yeah. was all about Spawn. All about Spawn. I mean, Tank Tank Girl had a movie. Tank Girl did have a movie, but it was all about Spawn for me. Did Savage Dragon oh. have a, a movie too? Maybe like a non-animated one. I can't I remember. Don't know. That. So no, I'm, I couldn't tell you. Real quick, I'm actually reading up on more on uh, on Starfire. Sorry, but um, I didn't know that Marv Wolfman, who I've met, um, oh, yeah. co-created it. Yeah, we 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 met Marv Wolfman. Yeah. He's tall as fuck. He's he is. Tall, yeah. He's a tall fucking dude. So and yeah, she was supposed to be black. <laughs> oh, oh Savage Dragon had an animated series. Yeah, yeah, okay. that's what I thought. I could have sworn he had an animated series. So yeah, I, I thought he had I a live action. I don't think. I don't, think so. I, I don't remember, but he could have. Then it could have went to shit. I just he could, yeah, it could have been guy, one of those straight to video. Could have been a guy as a dragon who he was a cop. He joins the police force. I was like, what the fuck? Mm-hmm. So I wasn't a huge fan of that. But like um, Wildcats, I kind of re- uh, not Wild Youngbloods. I was reading for a little bit. I remember that one. That was good. I, yeah, it was kind of good, but it just they weren't. They're were trying to be want to be X Men. Yep, it, wasn't, yep. it wasn't happening. I mean, the the artwork was excellent, from, from my opinion, because I like I like Rob Liefeld and uh, Tom McFarlane's drawing style, but the story was kind of flat for me. Yeah, yeah. So, um, um, I will I say this: it. like in terms of, I think I mentioned it last week or the week prior. I mean, for Dragon Ball fans, you know, Piccolo. Piccolo, <laughs> Piccolo was a black character. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Come on now, it's the blackest dad ever. Yeah, exactly. You know, if you believe that black dads, black dads are terrible, so <laughs> there was there was something someone brought up about Dragon Balls regarding like how Goku's a horrible father, but like somebody's like Goku wasn't a horrible father; he was just fucking dead. <laughs> like every time, like Goku spent most of most of Dragon Ball Z dead. Yeah. So like, yeah, Piccolo raised his son, but then Piccolo actually fucking kidnapped his son and left and basically left his son out to to the wolves. I am not giving by this a pass. <laughs> how dare you, Blue? Listen, if you, if you died and you trained to come back to life, was the first thing you should do as a father? <laughs> would, would it go to be what? whoop somebody's ass? I spent some time with your son. Well, he did. I mean, he did train with his son. Goku, Goku gave his life. Goku gave his life twice for to go for Gohan. I mean, he should have spent time with Gohan. Like, oh, he did in training a, a, a little bit. <laughs> what did he, he do? He he trained him to go. Fight his fights to whoop some guy's ass for him. I mean, come on, man. That's that is some black ass shit too. I'm just saying, but uh, yes. you know, stereotypical bullshit. But yeah, it's he was a terrible father. <laughs> a terrible father. And he's he's so likable with it. You almost don't notice, especially when you're a kid, kind of watching this shit. Yeah, <laughs> it's only it's only because he literally wasn't black. But if he was actually black, I, I think that there would be a huge controversy. Oh yeah, yeah. But hey, it is what it is. Um, I can't think of any any others that we should even mention. I mean, the sad thing is, uh, I can't. I don't really mess with like Solo Cyborg. Every time I've read Solo Cyborg, it's just been kind of flat. Other than the origin, it gets it gets okay, and then it goes into like the realm of this like category of comic books that I am that I'm not in the demographic for. It's like very cheesy, campy like monster of the week type thing and where yep. you know as a as an older comic book reader I need to have actual story arcs. Yeah. You know, and, and you just don't you end up not getting them. And and there's there's like a lot that you can get out of, you know, a cyborg story arc. I mean you have like his father being like the scientist asshole, um, you know, him basically losing his humanity to his cyborg parts, you know, dealing with like various other, you know, enemies, but um, you don't get like a real cohesive story, you know, when it comes to him. And I, I feel like, I feel like they could really make a, a better comic book out of, out of that character. Cause yeah, I mean, I, I had, I still have a lot of, a lot of his solo stuff, but it's, I mean, they weren't great. You know, you know, what's funny with Cyborg for me, I can never get a sense of his personality. Like I could with Jon Stewart or with the, even Mr. Terrific. Like it just, he just, he wasn't written like this in the same manner, you know? Yeah. But I just, I, I don't get who he kind of is, what makes him tick as much, but it I mean, is what it is. I mean, Teen Titans Go should let you all, let you know what you need to yeah. do. Oh, I mean, oh, I, mean he, I know he's about waffles. Waffles, right. waffles, yeah. waffles. <laughs> you know, it terrible. sucks that Cyborg isn't in uh, Young Justice. 
Like I know yeah. he's part of the Justice League, but I feel like oh, I mean, and there's yeah. he's kind of got that connection with the team. Actually, no, that was was that what I get I get the movie confused with the Justice League because there's a scene where I think in Teen Titan versus uh, the Justice League, there's a scene where um, where Cyborg goes and hangs out the Teen Titan. He like brings him like pizza or something like that, and that's the first time you hear him say like booyah or something like that. But mm-hmm. I, I mean, it would be just cool to see you know see him hang out with the with the Titans. So in in Young Justice, uh, very early on, Cyborg graduates to the Justice League. Yep. So you like literally never see him, and the only times yeah. you do are like the huge battles, and like he usually doesn't really say anything, or he says very very little. So there's a lot of fucking characters, and and especially as you go on in Young Justice, there's a shit ton of characters. For sure. There's a shit ton. Even there's a shit ton of. Characters for both heroes and villains. So I'm like, what the fuck? I mean, you know, to be honest with you, Young Justice introduced me to Aqualad, and I've I, ever since I've thought Aqualad was fucking badass. Aqualad oh, yeah, is pretty badass. dope, and yeah. that's on. Uh, he's a uh, Kelder. LGBT. Kelder. I mean, he's a gay Calder? character Calder now. Wrong. So did you go through that Calder whole story? Yeah. Wait, go ahead, Cronus. He's a gay character now. I didn't know that. No. Yeah. Yeah. Oh I yeah. Know, like, um, yeah, and. Like reading, so I have like his solo stuff. Yeah, he's, he's a gay character now. Okay. Yeah, so, so I, I guess uh, before Young Justice, there was another Aqualad before Calderon. He goes, he has a different name, and he's a white guy. And I guess in Young Justice they meet. I guess so. He he doesn't call him Aqualad. They call him by his his given name. His government name. Like, government name. Yeah, his government <laughs> name. But I guess he was the former Aqualad. I was like, oh shit. Okay, and then in the comics, Aqualad is the uh, Calderon is gay, and then they added that to Young Justice. But everyone says that Young Justice changed him and made him gay. But apparently, he's always been gay. Just people weren't paying attention. So there's yeah, a huge controversy about that shit. Yeah, the the one thing I will say um, is sometimes comics can be too subtle with things. Like sometimes you know you have to if you're gonna have a gay character, or or a character representing any marginalized group, you gotta be sometimes more overt. You know, not that you have to do uh, do it like right at the beginning or intro if that's not what you want to do as a as a creator, but um, it does help to be more direct. Like we talk about Iceman, even when you uh, for some people who don't like read comics or whatever, obviously you know a gay character and. Uh, the last few decades or whatever, um, you know, some people argue about, oh, well, he wasn't when I was, you know, reading back in the 80s or 70s or, you know, mm-hmm. it, it is what it is, well, but I you got to be direct. Well, sometimes. I think you have to, this is the problem, right? Especially right now um, is that corporations are, are tentative to like be overt with these sorts of things because I mean, just look at fucking Bud Light. I mean, they, they gave somebody, this person wasn't even a fucking spokesperson for Bud Light. They just gave this person their own custom can, and they. I mean, look how much revenue they lost, and look how, look how much backlash. You know, be, because they gave a person a custom can who happens to be trans, and it's just like, it's not even that big a fucking deal. Like, who gives a? Sh- it's a shitty beer. Who cares? <laughs> so you know, I, 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 I sort of get why they're they're hesitant, and because especially now when you have like this, you know, quote unquote anti woke movement, when. You know, somebody being trans or their their sexuality has nothing to do with like being woke, but they but they attach all these things that aren't like white dude normative, you know, white dude you know straight normative to like being woke, and it's like that's not what being woke is about. It's nothing to do with with like being woke. It's it's kind of it's kind of dumb. So yeah, I, I I get the fact that there's definitely going to be some uh, some you're right some backlash to it. I get it, but. I don't know. If you're gonna do something, do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, don't, don't, don't be fucking half ass it. Or, I mean, don't, don't do something where only in the month of June does that character have anything having to do with a gay relationship uh, or, or coming out as trans or anything like that. And then the whole rest of the year and years afterwards, nothing. I don't know. That's weird. Mm. I mean, that's how I, you know, that's why i don't like some of this stuff when it comes to like having these months where corporations can just jump from like you know the 
how do I put it? Like if it's like you know Pride Month, it's all everything's everything's about like you know the LGBT community. But then like the next month, it's you know it's Patriotic Month. So you know, and a couple months before that, it's you know it's Black History Month, and it's just like they just jump for revenue from like these things the thing, and it just seems kind of gross to me, especially when you know they don't really um, stand behind these things at all. They just do it for money. I mean, like like I said with, with Bud Light, I think I think where Bud Light really went wrong. Is that first of all, like, yeah, they had some backlash with uh, Dylan Mulvaney, right? But then they also yeah. didn't help out this person, like at all, like after all the backlash. And I think that's why they then they got hit with both ends, and rightfully so. It's like, listen, if you if you were you know, quote unquote woke enough, even though it's not even fucking really woke, to like give them you know this customized can, but then as soon as you have a hint of backlash, you don't stand up for this person. It's like you just wanted them to like the, you, this person didn't mean anything to you, yeah, like at all. Exactly. Like what they and I'm pretty sure you know she's gotten death threats and all this mm-hmm. shit, but they didn't give a fuck at all. And so what what is that going to do? You're going to get you know backlash from the hillbillies, and then you're going to get backlash from the LGBT you know community because you didn't stand up for her, and you know you could have just stood up for them, you know. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a really good point. It's a really good point. I mean. Stand for something. <laughs> like, pick, yeah. pick something. You know. Yeah, I think if they would have stood up for her, yeah, yeah, it, it would have been a. For me, it would have been like okay, but like that's just like such a stab in the back of like it, not standing up for her. So. But you know what's tough though? It's it's so weird to predict. I know, like in hindsight, is twenty twenty. You say, oh, of course they should have suspected that there was going to be billions of dollars of revenue and and these protests and whatnot. But we've talked about it on this show plenty of times. Bud Light and Coors and Miller and all. If you go to Pride events or a gay bar or whatever in San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, five years ago, ten years ago, you would see products with literally the, those beers' name yeah. and then like a rainbow, the rainbows and shit. Yeah, it's like this is nothing new. So it wasn't new. So that was the thing. I was like, why now? What do you think they serve in gay bars? Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> the fuck? I mean. <laughs> Name, name me a, like a, a a gay only like liquor, you know what I mean? Like it doesn't exist. Like it's yeah. like it's it's booze. Like people like you know drinking and shit. Like it it just it seems so silly to me. Yeah. Although I will say this though, I mean, you know, if I have too much Zim, Zima in me, it, you know, I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> It's all bad. <laughs> oh man, fucking Zima. Zima. Is it even real liquor? Like Zima oh. Zima also, for the record, is stronger than Bud Light. I uh, yeah. yeah. Goes. Bud Light is trash. Facts. So you know, that was some successful ass marketing though with Zima. Like it's I funny. Yeah, it's funny because you can still buy fucking Zima. Like it's 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 few and far between, but there are places that still fucking sell it. So funny. All I, I know. All I know is y'all are okay with selling Zima still, even in 2023, the year of our Lord. But <laughs> I can't say. fucking find the original Four Loko any goddamn say. where. Fuck y'all. Yeah, it's technically illegal. I think Fuck it literally y'all. had crack in it. You can still find it, but you can't find the, the original. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure it had crack in it. Yeah, it, ha- it literally had fucking... Yeah, it had like a hallucinogen in it. So you can't fucking order that shit. It was like... Same, <laughs> ab- same thing with absinthe. Absinthe had a legit... Hallucinogen in it. You can well, buy no, it now. Yeah, wormwood. Hmm? Yeah, yeah but you can buy it now without the wormwood. I guess it's like. A, what the fuck is the point without the wormwood? Goddamn! I mean, you still get you well, drunk. You, you still get you drunk. <laughs> it tastes like shit, though. I mean, it's like you I can still it. buy it though. It does. It does taste awful. I will say. I, I wanted. I tried it. Like I think I was like twenty two or something or twenty one. And I was like, yeah, I want to try some absinthe. I tried that shit. That shit was fucking nasty as hell. I was like, "Who the fuck drinks this shit?" I, I think I think Europeans? we probably both had it wrong. I think we're you're supposed to have it like dripping over like an ice cube because normally it tastes like. Yeah. Remember correctly, it's like black licorice, but like way more bitter. Which yeah. is like, how do you do that? But yeah. Bro, I took that shit to the fucking head, and I was I regret it instantly. Yeah, it's not great. Yeah, you know, you're supposed to like melt sugar over it or some bullshit. Yeah, well, you, yeah, yeah, you drop so when you, you buy it, the, it comes with the spoon. Yeah. I threw that spoon away. I didn't give a shit. I was like, look, I'm trying to get real drunk. You were like, you know this, what I mean? you were like this crack is done. Yeah. Throw the spoon away. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was I was the classy type of 21-year-old Sorry, yeah. drunk that uh, graduated from Cisco. So You know, oh I feel my like, uh, did, you, did you hear recently? Well, probably not recently, but there was like a, a bunch of studies of like how um, the how lead 
um, led to like a, a spike in crime for like a, the longest time. Mm-hmm. What the fuck? I feel yep. like Four Loco was like the same thing. That's why they had to fucking shut that shit down. It's like <laughs> there's something in Four Loco. We saw a spike in like obvious violence at these places that were selling Four Loco. So let's uh let's re let's redo this uh, this recipe and take the crazy out. How fucking <laughs> long did they legally sell over OG formula? I don't I don't know how, how many. I, know. I I think if we look up <clears throat> you know club shootings, you could probably like track that. <laughs> That's fucking I'm pretty terrible. Sure. <laughs> How many club shootings? Oh my fucking! God. I mean, it 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 did get you really angry and really emotional and violent. I mean, it did. It did all the things. It's kind of like a. I used to be a huge fan of a uh, Red Bull and vodka. That was like my my jam oh, for like shit. the longest fucking time. In Same my forties, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I should not drink that. No but way. it was like yeah, going to a club and being drunk and hyper. It was fucking fun as shit. So, you know, what was was wild to me. I was in college and they used to drive that RAV4 on campus and give yeah. out Red Bull. <laughs> I remember that. Yep. And oh, so they still do that, by the way. For free now? So? Yeah, they'll come in. Yeah. They'll have two little blonde girls come in and be like, hey, you guys want Red Bull? That is a little satchel, like mm. a little cooler, and they just pass out Red Bull. And they That's want you to try. They, you can try the latest flavor. Or okay. the OG, and they just pass them out, and then they that shit them. worked. It had people hooked because everybody, everybody I know who tried it for the very first time was like, "This is the nastiest soda I've ever had in my life." <laughs> but also, I'm so productive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, I feel fucking like I'm fucking. And it, it it took like maybe two months before someone uh, uh, kept talking, or the buzz on campus was, "Hey, you know, if you get those free nasty ass sodas." And you mix them with a little bit of this rum or vodka, you got a party going. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For real. So. Well, you know what's crazy? It, it was like a um, – what was it? The guy who made it, he – I think he got it from like – I want to say not Tibet, but it was like somewhere in Asia. It was like some drink that he – that it was for energy. And so he basically just took that formula and modified it and made it into a soda. And, uh, yeah, it just became hugely popular. I, I didn't know that they originally made – um, Red Bull in like 1987. Wow, but, damn! But it was mostly in uh, Europe. Europe, yeah, because it was it was in Austria was when it first came through, and then once they figured out, yeah, that that Red Bull and alcohol was just like I think that's when it probably came to America, and people were just like, all right, let's get her done. So for for Fort Loco, they reformulated um, in December of 2010 um, after a bunch of controversy, or actually an FDA ban was created uh, about mixing like. Soda and I call it together, or caffeine and, and I call it together. But uh, Four Local started in 2005, so it was a good. They had a good five year run before they had to change their formula. And it, it was a wild, wild west back then. God damn. Red, it really was. Red Bull is fucking killing it as far as like energy drinks, energy drinks go. In 2020, oh, yeah. they had a 43% market share. That's fucking God insane. For, and especially in a world where like Monster exists. Yep. You know? Because like Monster is like, that's the new thing. Right. Oh no, the new thing is uh is blow. That's the new thing. The workout mm-hmm. energy drink. Or, or Dude, uh, people have been doing blow since the seventies, man. What do you yeah, talking right? about? What are you talking about? <laughs> now, it's, <laughs> now it's in liquid form, so there you go. Mm. Right. Oh okay. no, I'm not it's not blow, it's bang. Bang is the new one. Oh That's bang, yeah, it's a little older too. Yeah. yeah. Well the thing with like again, Red Bull I didn't know what the fucking energy drink was. Like, if you told me oh, it's an energy drink, I'd be like, what the fuck are you talking about? You know? Yeah. But it, it just kind of captured the fucking market. But then they, I remember the late 90s, early 2000s, more extreme drinks, you know? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Harder. What's crazy is like, uh, Papa Bear's probably still in the chat, so he'll, he knows all about this. Um, and if you're in the military, like in the early 2000s, up to like, I think probably fucking today, like over, over in Iraq and shit, or even probably mm-hmm. Afghanistan too. Um, Rippets was like the shit. There were like these weird, oh, yeah. like half cans of like just pure fucking like caffeine and and like anger. And yeah, <laughs> they were just like you could get that shit like the chow hall, I think, for free. Yeah. And so yeah, like if you were tired, you take a couple of rip, couple of Rippets, man, and you were ready to go. What's what's the one that uh, they come with the warning? It's like a missile. The, oh, red line. Red line apparently. Oh, you can only drink, shit. Yeah, red line. You can only drink like half a can at a time or something. You don't, like don't fuck with Dude, that, man. Yeah. Re- remember fucking Joke Cola? Yeah. Like that yeah. was shit back then. 
Yeah, Jolt was like that was the, to me that was like the the original energy drink was Jolt because that one mm-hmm. that had the really high caffeine and that was for mostly like you know computer people like like me drinking that shit and doing stuff you probably shouldn't do. Yeah. Yeah. Jolt came out in 1985. Well, Jolt came out before Pepsi. It's pretty, no, it's Pe- pretty old. No. Oh, let me see. Pepsi Cola been around since like the 1900s. Early. Uh, Early 1900, or like mid 1900. Nah, not even that. They they came out in 18, 1884 is when Pepsi was started. God damn. <laughs> so, no, I, I was looking at something that said Pepsi released their energy drink called like J- Josta. Hold on. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look this up. Look look up when. Oh, uh, remember Josta? Look yeah. Up, look up when Coke took out cocaine, and then look up when was Jolt invented. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be interesting. Like. Let's see. I think it's within like I'm gonna say within three years. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even less than that. Oh man. God damn man. God, yeah. Damn. Do they got all kind of article? They there's still flavors of four loco that I've never drunk, and I used to drink this shit every fucking week. Oh, now there's like a whole row. If you go to like your where you when you get your next set of gas station dick pills. Go look where they have Four Loco, and there's like rows of fucking flavors in the back back there. They're they're all back there. But you know which one was my shit? I actually liked some of the non fucking energy shit, like Sobe and fucking Arizona iced tea. You oh about yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah. I, apparently, I didn't know this, but I guess Coca Cola or Pepsi owned that shit. For they real? Like, yeah, they were the parent company of Sobe. I thought they were separate, but no, they're they're owned by either Coke or Pepsi, no, and then they disappeared. They're gone. Sobe's still around. I think I have. I saw him in the Safeway recently. I know. They ain't big like they used to be. Yeah, they're now. They used to have commercials and shit. They're all over MTV. Yep. They're all over MTV. So, yeah, you, I mean, they, the website's still up and running. Wait, I maybe. mean, I don't mean shit. Uh, click the link. Yeah. And it's taking a while. It's taking a while for it to boot up. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Hyphy Hi- Juice is still around. <laughs> so it's on fucking GeoCities. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. <laughs> Damn, it's all Altavista. Keep it alive. I just, I just remember the one that I, I used to fuck with heavy was uh, Snapple too, because they had the fucking glass oh, yeah, bottle, love the yeah, fucking actually, shit on the, the corner and all that. I mean, yeah. you know, the, the great thing about Snapple is you, you can drink that, and then if somebody fucked with you, it was immediately you could just break it and stab them in the neck. I'm just saying, <laughs> shit was great. Yeah. <laughs> shit was great. Man, Snapple that's about that life. Snapple was definitely about that life, and I will say this: people like forget about this time period. But I remember, like ninety nine, two thousand, two thousand one, going in like people trying to sell random DVDs and people trying to sell random ass VHSs, and bum fights were a hot ass commodity. Yeah, you remember like fucking these bum fights? Yeah, you know what prodigy. those bum fight DVDs? Yep. This oh, is, some uh, so bad. This is Snapple. This is Snapple Rain. I still oh. have this bottle. Yeah, Why you got coins in it, like a fucking yeah. weirdo. Yeah, this is my this is my coin fucking collection fucking thing. But they don't make these bottles anymore. But they still make these, they still make these juices. But they're all zero calorie now. Why is there lube on the top of it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was like one of our first reactions. Was like us watching like that dude with remember that shit with the glass. Wait, which one? Remember it was like one of our first like episodes. One guy, did. one glass. Yeah, we watched that guy. It's oh. like stick a. Oh, what, what jar? One guy, one jar broke. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, like, oh, oh Jesus Christ! All bad. I had, yeah. I had blocked that out of my fucking memory. Yeah. God damn. I, well, because it was like two I girls woke up and they had this, and I was just like, oh. yeah, that that someone's got to have an alternative, I guess. Yeah, I mean, two girls, one cup starts awesome, and then it goes it goes bad really fucking quick. Real, well, he's not for prodigy. He he gets really yeah. bad. Real fucking. <laughs> the funny thing about that shit was very few people watched it all the way to the end. And that shit was one of the first viral gross out things that just everybody in their mama's fucking saw. For real. Yeah. yeah. I've I've ever someone made like a skit of Kermit the Frog watching it. <laughs> like, yeah. You're like watching it all the time you bust out the loop. <laughs> that was that was the thing that got me. Remember when you tried to search for it, um, you would find people reacting to it yeah. more so than the actual original video for good fucking reason. And then Magically, Blue was like, "Oh, I have it. Here's the link." Yeah, we're like, we're, yeah. Like, we're out somewhere too. I forget what the fuck yeah. we were at, but yeah, that shit was crazy. Yeah, and here's the thing: we always 
automat we never explain it, but we automatically assume that everybody in their mamas has seen it. There's an entire two or three generations probably that have not seen it. And <laughs> yeah, you don't right. want to. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, you don't need to. I mean, you could probably live your entire life and not be traumatized the way that most of us have. Mm-hmm. Like I said, it's you know, eventually, awesome. you know, eventually that's going to be trended on TikTok. It's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be oh, surging. No, because it's just China. No. China is never gonna allow two girls one cup. Uh, I mean, the, you won't see like the actual video, but you'll see people reacting. To it. Hmm. Like, I'm pretty sure that's gonna start trending on TikTok soon. The amazing thing is, those two girls are probably grandmothers at this point, almost. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Dang, no, because they were younger than us. Were they? Yeah, I mean, they had. To, I mean, we're in like when it came out, we're in our thirties. Oh damn! All right, Jesus Christ, the time flies. <laughs> They can still be they, grandmothers. They, they can still be grandmothers. Though. I mean, with that life, I mean. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Jesus. They, they would have no problem changing diapers, I guess. No. Oh, oh God. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You had to go there. Yeah. Just what? foul. <laughs> Just fucking nastiness. Ugh. Okay. Um, wholesome note. Uh, Kronos, didn't you watch <laughs> Elementals? Huh. Yeah, I did. Well, I watched Elemental. Elementals. How'd you like it? I thought it was actually pretty good. Um, yeah, I, I liked it a lot. Uh, more importantly, though, my my daughter loved it. Cause she's the demographic, you know. Yeah, yeah. I am not, so my thoughts in the movie are kind of irrelevant. But um, I think if you watch it with your kids, like it's it's a pretty good movie. Um, I think it's it actually there's like a lot of like undertones of like racism and like some other shit in there, but it's it's pretty obvious if you're older. But it's also like these things still exist. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I mean it's it, it was. I thought that the animation was cool, like seeing um, it ends up being kind of like a like a love story, which I was not expecting at all. Hmm. But that that really surprised me, and it's pretty it's pretty poignant of just like how you should basically um, societal societal norms are not like shouldn't be telling you like who who you should love or not love, you know. Awesome. And that's basically what it comes down to in the in the movie. And I thought that was a uh, that was pretty neat and. Uh, like seeing how these how all these other elements like interact with each other on a daily basis was uh was cool like fire earth um water and air and the know. avatar yeah and the avatar you know he's, he's bringing mm-hmm. and there's a spirit world as well you know he's bringing balance to the world um, did uh kind of plan to show up at any time no no because there was no uh, there was he had no trash to pick up you know it was, the world was already uh, you know pretty close to being in balance nice. was, my, my question is was did I miss uh, some type of like controversial backlash? Was there anything that yeah. prevent? Because it didn't do that well from most Pixar movies. Yeah, it's like one of the worst like box office for Pixar. Yeah, people. Um, there was a controversy about a possible like a a non-binary or trans character, which I'm like, um, not, sort of not really. I I think this is the problem is that people like looked they look for these things now of like when they don't call somebody like he or her and if they don't hear that automatically they're like pavlonian response is anger and it's just like does that really even matter like to me i didn't really care so and it was like literally the the character that i think it was was like maybe in the in movie for like maybe 30 seconds if that and it's not a very memorable character at all um and it definitely definitely the movie was not revolved around this character <laughs> so not that it it's okay even if if it was but it's just like these these fucking insane people are just bigots are just anything that's outside of the norm for them is like it's so bad i'm just like you know whatever i mean this this movie is more about feelings and if you're not about feelings then you know it's probably where you're gonna have a heart attack at the age 50 so um <laughs> yeah that that was the backlash that was the controversy there was there was a possible non-binary character i saw some shit on fucking i think it was tiktok and they were talking about this ancient show that only us fucking old fucks are going to remember the love boat yeah and there was an episode on the love boat that actually was all about accepting a trans character Um, oh i saw that that episode i saw that on tiktok yeah and the captain had a friend yeah exactly exactly and I, i guess it's a direct counter to this weird narrative that, oh, because it's 2023, uh, this is getting pushed and out of nowhere and I didn't grow up. If you were alive in 1981, 82, 83, or whatever the fuck, the Love Boat's heyday, and you watched every episode, which you may or may not have, 
this was one of them. And they also yeah, there had, was they also had something else too. I can't remember, but definitely the love. There was, there was there was one of the, the love boat. And the other one they showed was um, the oh god, what's the name? Uh, it's, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue. I just lost it. But like basically, one of the characters, uh, he saved a woman who actually was a man. Um, I guess she she had like a heart attack and he gave her mouth mouth and resuscitation and like you know brought her back to life and then like it was later on this this I mean it was obvious that it was a man but like the the main guy didn't realize it was a man and then um yeah he he, he kind of freaked out about it but then like later on like this trans character goes to a bar and gets into a fight or something it's, like some controversy happens and ends up getting killed and like Larry that's how like the episode kind of leaves off on a cliffhanger like you know how horrible something like this can happen to somebody who is just uh, basically a normal person living their life they just you know decided to dress like a woman but yet here here they lost their life oh, what's the even that i gotta look it up and see what show it was it's on the tip of my tongue it's the one it's it's where um family guy got their intro from where the guy is like playing a piano and his wife is playing is singing in the background oh, the, uh, uh, archie bunker and- archie yeah it's it's from archie Archie, okay. I, no, no, no. I, I thought it was on the, at least on that TikTok. There was one from the Jeffersons. Oh, the, the one for Jefferson was for the KKK. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I think both. But all right. Oh, but, yeah. oh, wait. There was. I think there was a trans character for that too. But I, it was for Archie as well. There was one for Archie. Yeah. So it it's been part of mainstream shows for longer than uh, folks would think. Well, even beyond like my mainstream shows, like we've all known about these people existing for like, especially like if you lived in California, like you know, we we've yeah, even outside of like California, like the more I guess derogatory terms now that they that they used to use those existed for trans people. They would just call them. I'm not gonna say the word now because it's it's offensive, but you know they had other words that they were referred to as like decades ago, yep. it was the last century. And yep. so it's just for some reason now um, these politicians and these other idiots just have like almost goldfish like it's not even goldfish memory they just they need to create something to like have the last place aversion you know because um, there's there's not very many of them still to this day yes there's more now but it's only because um, our society is more, most of us are more accepting of them now and it's the yep. same thing with like if you look up like the chart of like left handedness it's like once they stopped. Um, making left-handedness, um, you know, <laughs> evil and like you're possessed by the devil. As soon as they said it's okay to be left-handed, then guess what? The p- amount of people that you know were came out as left-handed skyrocketed, but then it plateaued. It went from like four percent to I think like maybe twelve, and then it just plateaus. That's they were always there. They just were forced to write with their fucking right hand because people were assholes, like by beating them, beating them with uh, rulers and shit when they were kids. But you know, if if give left their own devices. They would write with their left hand, and it's the same thing today. When you see these people that are coming out as like all these, what, what people think are like strange genders and you know different sexualities, it's like these people they already existed before, but now they feel like it's okay to to come out and be who they are. And I think it's really telling as a society that there's a portion of us that are just like fuck you, go away. And it's just like just let them be them. Like they're not hurting anybody, and they 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 have to make up stuff about them being like pedophiles and shit it's like i've literally never heard of a single fucking um drag queen raping a child like never yeah. like <laughs> and i've heard of a whole bunch of other people Priest. that have raped children <laughs> but never a drag queen like never yeah. and i and again these are people that have existed for like the longest like when rupaul came out i was like pro- he's probably like one of the most well-known drag queens right Yep. These things were never brought up when he came up. I'm, I'm hopefully I'm saying he correctly because he's a drag queen. We all know he's. Oh yeah, yeah. Ru- RuPaul, RuPaul goes goes I mean, by a guy, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So when yeah, he came he, out, like I mean, he comes out in a suit. Sometimes. Yeah, when he came out decades ago, like nobody was talking about this dude was raping children. Nope. Or well, drag there probably in were raping children. Fucked up people. There, there were. Not, not, not. It, it wasn't like in the mainstream in terms of that, but there were plenty of evil, fuck, like Pat Robertson probably oh, did. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but it's not like it seems like today. Like it's like the du jour thing to do is just like beat up on these people that are are such a small minority that they can't they can't drum up enough support within themselves to like face against these these assholes that are out there. You know, because it's like they keep saying all this stuff about them, but it's like one well, percent of the population. 
here's here's my here's my other thing too. Um, we need to bring back some old school shit. And here's what I mean by that. Usually the folks, especially guys who are the loudest about, oh, I can't stand these queers and blah, blah. Usually you can find them in bathrooms with a dick in their mouth. Yep. That's <laughs> the truth. Let's, or, just, be, let's or, just be fucking real. And, and, that, and that was a overt tell that mm. gay and straight people would say, like, why do you have this hard on for being all homophobic? And usually that's what it was. It was some of these guys having a literal hard on for it. I think, I think we need to bring that back. If this is like your number one issue, you're always talking about, it's so important to you that nobody comes out or whatever. There's a reason for that. (laughs) Oh man. Most likely. Yeah. It's funny to me because there are guys that are married with, Children that are like that and still get found out. Yeah, so they could be living happier knows. lives. I mean, yeah, so you know what I mean. Because I actually knew someone that is exactly as as Project said. There was someone that was very loud, very a, a literal a bully. Come to find out that they were found at the local gay like hookup spot. And I was like, what the fuck? And we we kind of been seeing that a lot more in media too. Like in like for for example, in uh, oh, if you haven't seen it, you. No, you. I'm talking about like in in the media, like uh, okay, I'll say the show Euphoria with um, with Zendaya. There's a character on there. Uh, he's a married man, and um, yeah, he's he's gay, and like he fucking basically beats his son all the goddamn time, and mainly just because he can't really be himself. It isn't until he's able to be himself that he's happier, and he like kind of moves on. But like that whole scene when he comes out, his fucking dude walks to his house and piss on his all goddamn floor. <laughs> it was, God, it was yeah, bad. Yeah. Oh, that, that was bad. <laughs> if you ever seen uh, American Beauty, because we were talking about that last week. About oh, the yeah, that's right. We go from the movies in the 90s. The scene where the dad played by, uh, what is it? It's, I think his name is Michael Cooper. But he beats the shit out of his son because he's a military dude. And he beats him up. And then he, he tries to kiss the neighbor, thinking that the neighbor was like coming on. And this guy was married, was super pro-American. Everything has to be American. You buy your car American, American flag everywhere. But then he was like trying to make out with a uh, Kevin you know, Spacey's character. Kevin Spacey's character who who turns out to actually be gay and, and uh, actually a rapist. So you know, there's that. Yeah. But then like he his character gets killed because like the the pro like all American dad has the he has a secret now with the the neighbor and he's like, well, he can't let my secret go. Ends up ending him, shooting him in the back of the head. Shit is, this shit is wild. I mean, even with the uh, super ass tragic Orlando uh, nightclub okay. shooting from a few years ago with what was it, the Pulse Club or whatever? I'm sure I, I'm almost positive. Obviously, I don't know know this, but the, the shooter was probably closeted. You know, and that's why he's taking out his fucking anger on innocent fucking people. You know, but it's just it's. It's it's backwards. It's fucking misguided. Uh, you should let people be who the fuck they want to be. You know what I mean? But I don't know. People got these repressed ass hatred going through them. And here's the other thing too. If you are into women, and there's less guys into women, that's good for you. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's also. It th- but it doesn't change anything that you could just be a piece of shit and women don't like you. So yeah, there, there, that could be. Work, that could work, be. work on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You know. while, while you're like realizing your bigotry and shit like that, like work on yourself, be a better person, and maybe somebody will find you more attractive. Yeah. And if you're drowning in the pussy, swim to the butt. <laughs> well, maybe, those are I mean, pro that's, tips. That's probably the whole thing that they uh, they always wanted to put. They just <laughs> rather drown. <laughs> All right. Let, let's yeah, keep this, there's, uh, there's nothing more. There's no more important than air than butts. <laughs> uh, we, we <laughs> what air? Just Dude, that, man, just... that man is alive and out on the outside, and everybody should be scared. I mean, he's he's <laughs> an old else? man now at this he's point. What's he going to do? Wow. Have, you, so, yeah. have you seen his current interview? He's very frail looking. Yeah, he's he going to catch somebody slipping. I guess I mean, you. Let me yeah, he's slipping. <laughs> so, <Yeah. laughs> he's going to catch yeah. someone lacking. His, his yeah. Yeah. I can already see it. He's going to be at the urinal. Just minding your own business, pissing. Yeah. All of a sudden, he's aware of the hard way. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, you, you are the highway. 
Yeah, all up in your ear. He's like, you can use the easy way or the hard way. <sighs> yeah, you got a shank to your neck. You know, yeah, you're like, what you the fuck? I think the Buddy Warriors should have been like the new fucking boogeyman. Like, to, like tell this kids to keep the, to pull their pants up. Like, oh, the Buddy Warriors gonna get you. you keep your pants <laughs> down, get you. Gonna, oh man, man, get some jelly between your butt cheeks. Oh wait, no, you don't do that. You want you want him to know that you're easy now. Oh, <laughs> Damn. Damn. Let's let's talk about another I piece of shit real quick. You. Wait, what? Go ahead. So let's talk about another piece of shit real quick. I want to go with. Uh, with Clarence Thomas. Oh, shit. Oh, no, here we go. This motherfucker, man. Um, <laughs> so the basketball if, player? N- no, 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 no. He definitely does not play basketball. Ah. Well, it's just kind of weird because I actually read up on like some of his like early years and I, how he went from like being like a civil rights participant and like kind of a militant to like this is like, this is like, if you were playing like the odds and you bet and you bet a dollar on this motherfucker for him like not doing this you you would have become a billionaire you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain yeah so the yeah. the most recent reason why uh, Clarence Thomas is a piece of shit be, beyond that he probably definitely raped or sexually assaulted uh what was it Anita oh, Hill Anita right Hill? yeah yeah um beyond that um <laughs> him and his you know other, you know, Supreme Court justices that happen to be on the right, even though it's not a political organization, but it is, um, they decided to overturn affirmative action. And I, in the past, uh, a younger version of me actually had a problem with affirmative action as well because I didn't understand um, the purpose of it fully. And I think that it was one of those things where um, it doesn't have a really good uh, – reputation and it's never really explained to like the vast majority of people of why affirmative action was yeah. needed to begin with and why it's still occurring to this day, especially when it comes to schools. So I want to be clear is that first of all, Clarence Thomas benefited from affirmative action. Correct. Okay. <laughs> and so this crab ass motherfucker, he's not even a fucking crab at this point. Actually, no, he's worse than a crab. He's like a crab that climbed out of the fucking pot and then there's a ladder that was left behind, and they just fucking put a fucking top on it and just stapled that shit closed. For mm-hmm. cl- that's how crab that motherfucker is. All right, because George H.W. Bush hired him because he was a black man. Correct. That's affirmative action, okay? And when it, when it comes, and don't get me wrong, he's qualified, except for the fact that he sexually assaulted somebody, which should have disqualified, but you know, whatever. <laughs> um,. The reason why we have an affirmative action, especially when it comes to schooling, is because we still have um, systemic problems when it comes to opportunities with especially Ivy League schools in America. And what I mean by this is if you are black in America, in general, you're going to have some disadvantages. And de- especially depending on like where you happen to live, you're going to have a shitload more disadvantages. Let me just give you an example. If you grew up in fucking Compton or in East Oakland or fucking parts of Chicago, um, you're likely not going to have some... Your, your parents likely did not go to an Ivy League school at all. So you're not going to get legacy admission, which I'm going to get back to in a minute. All right? You likely didn't have any sort of magnet school near you. You didn't have any sort of acceleration program near you. Your school was likely underfunded. You likely didn't have any extracurricular activities that you could have done. These are all things that are checkboxes when you go to college. Yep. All right. I never went to college, but I know this is how it works. Um, those are checkboxes, okay? And so there's a whole bunch of checkboxes that you're missing just because you happen to be black and born in a disadvantaged community. So that's the, one of the, that's the main reason for affirmative action is that it gives an opportunity for these schools to give an extra check to somebody that um, is from minority community. And it, it, it is, it's, a, it's a consideration for them. It, it doesn't mean that it, it doesn't mean that you could have like a below average GPA and um, go to fucking Harvard. That's not how that works. All it means is, is that there's a whole bunch of check boxes that they got to check for all these things. You get an extra one for being, you know, black or anybody, any brown person other than uh, Asian. First, a lot of Asians. And even then, racism gets in there, too. So that's all it is. It's just an extra checkbox. It doesn't mean you get extra preferred treatment. 
It doesn't mean that you can be underqualified and go to fucking Harvard. That's not what that means. It's just an extra checkbox. Correct. Yep. Um, <clears throat> can I state something that never gets said in terms of affirmative action? And it always pisses me off. White women. This is a fucking fact, and people don't like it, but I don't care that they don't like it. The number one benefactor of affirmative action is white women. White women. Now, that should be the lead every time affirmative action I ever discuss. That should be the number one thing that gets discussed because it's skewed as only benefiting black people when the number one benefactor is not black people, it's white women. And that drives me absolutely crazy. They get ex completely left out of the conversation, even though they're the number one benefactor of it. So, um, How does that mechanic I'm work? So I don't know how it works in school. Um, I know it works like that in like jobs, but I don't understand how that mechanic actually works. So um, one of the reasons, first of all, you have to, you, you try to have as close to as even, not fit, not directly 50-50, but somewhere in the 45-55 or somewhere in that ratio balance of uh, men to women on a co-ed campus. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah. You know, and of that 45 to 55 that are women, an overwhelming 80% or so, especially when you're talking about Ivy League schools, are white women. So, or, or maybe, maybe, maybe it's closer to 75 <laughs> Depends on the campus. Obviously, Asian women get represented uh, more so than their population as well. But certainly, number one benefactor is white women. I just need to state that it's not me picking on anybody. It's just a fucking fact. Well, you know what really like really pissed me off when it came like this affirmative action thing is that they tried to say that it was racism against Asians is the yeah. reason why we should be repealing affirmative action um, because repeatedly this this happened to me at, at Harvard especially. Because they were dinging uh, Asians for not having the right sort of personality. Mm -hmm. And um, first of all, affirmative action doesn't fix that. No. It doesn't even like address it at all. Like you getting rid of affirmative action still doesn't address that. It, it, doesn't, af it doesn't affect, you know, people's racism against Asians because you think that their personalities, as if they're all the same, are, you know, off-putting in an educational environment that doesn't address that at all. And so the fact that the, this piece of shit, I forget the guy who, uh, who actually started, you know, trying to repeal this again, which had precedent because it, it got upheld like as recently as like, I think it was like 2016. <laughs> and for them to say it's, it's unfair against Asians when it's like, okay, if it is, then I don't know, maybe fix that. But you repealing it is not fixing that people are still going to get, they're going to get the ex exact same, are the exact same um, qualifications from an Asian applicant and without affirmative action it doesn't affect them not liking them because of their personality affirmative action doesn't take your personality into account no it, 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 it certainly doesn't this is also used as kind of a wedge between Asian American communities and black communities and it's an ugly wedge um, first of all there's less undergraduate black students, um, and I'm talking about total diaspora black students, at all eight of the Ivy Leagues than there are at just the undergraduate school for Howard University, HBCU. You're talking a very small number. First of all, the schools are small to begin with, and that's on purpose, that's by design. You know, they could be as large as Michigan or Texas or UCLA or whatever, uh, even though those are, those are all um, state sponsored schools. Um, they could be that large based on their notoriety and their endowment and their uh, billions of dollars that they have from all their trust funds and all that. They decide not to. They want to be elite. They want to be small. I get it. It benefits them financially. Um, I know people who have gone to Harvard, some of my really good friends. Uh, they can tell you all about it. But the at the end of the day, the few sprinkling of black students that are on campus have always been treated like they didn't belong there yep. and judged and said, well, you're not smart enough to get in here or you just got in for affirmative action. Meanwhile, all of them got 4.0s, 4.6s, 4.7s, near perfect scores on your SATs, did all of this while living in 
tough environments and you know all of this other stuff you should look at their goddamn resumes they're fucking rock stars but racism mm -hmm. is an ugly ass thing it tells you where people belong and where people don't and it all goes back to this stupid caste system that people have now the only bright side and i'm not trying to put a silver lining on this because it's a shit decision HBCU admissions uh, and enrollment are going to balloon and skyrocket. Mark my words. Yeah, they probably will. Because, I mean, the, the problem with, um, you know, ending affirmative action is that we already know what's going to happen because it happened in California. For those that don't know outside of California, California is racist, too. Like, people seem to forget, like, we, we don't have the greatest track record when it comes to, to racism at all. And uh, f years ago, um, we uh, it was voted on and it, affirmative action was repealed. And so what happened? The amount of people going to colleges that were black or, you know, Latino, it plummeted significantly. Can I add one thing to that? Hmm. You're, you're absolutely right, Cronus, for the public universities and uh, CSUs and UCs yeah. here in California. Absolutely right. At the same time, I think it was four or five years ago. California brought on a new affirmative action for all corporate boards here in the state. Yeah. And for that affirmative action, they said that if you're a publicly traded corporation of a certain size, uh, you need to have at least one or two, I think maybe it was on an escalating scale, uh, women on your board. Now, nine times out of 10, that was going to be a white woman. And so I just want to point that out, that there is no issues whatsoever with affirmative action when we're talking about white women. And there's always issues when we're talking about black people. Yeah. And I think the, the thing is, uh, you know, it should affirmative action need to exist. No, it shouldn't. But racism is still like it's still like the racist bullshit is still there. Like, and, it, and it's it's unavoidable. And so until like people stop asking stupid ass questions like, why do we need this when it's very obvious? Then we're still going to need this until people stop being bigots and racist. We're still going to need shit like this, and um, it's just—it's a shame. And so, my my original thought, you know, when they first uh, repealed affirmative action, was okay. If you're going to repeal affirmative action, then then please repeal legacy admissions. There you go. Like th that should be like the first obvious step to making things more equal. Repeal legacy admissions. What I mean by that, if you never went to college, which I didn't, but I know what it means. Legacy admissions is when your parents happen to go to that prestigious school. And so that gives you the checkbox of something that's positive for your admission. There's people that are literally, their last name is on the fucking buildings at Harvard. And they're going there just because their last name is on the building. They didn't do fucking shit. Their parents and maybe ancestors did, but they didn't do shit. You know what I mean? And, and a lot of them, they are way less qualified than these other people that are fighting to get in there. You know, and it's just, it, it's, it's fucking bullshit and it's unfair. And for these same people to sit there and talk about how unqualified people with affirmative action, it's like, no, it's not that they're unqualified. It's just they're, they're missing some extra bullshit that they literally don't fucking have access to. Like having somebody's parent that went to that school or, that, or their parents donated, you know, half a million That's dollars to the school or you know or some shit like that or or they happen to be on these you know whatever kind of extracurricular activity that they can get on that gives them an extra point but that literally doesn't exist in uh, other communities you know so if you want to fix all that shit first cool then in affirmative action fix all that shit first be nice it, 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 it would be what's great. crazy is that wasn't there also like um, I think the president had tried to pass a bill to for what is it, loan forgiveness for some college students, and that was kind of turned away by the the house or whatever, right? Yeah. Shut down. Turned down. Yeah, there was another. Yeah, that one's. I don't know. I don't. It should be. You know, there's we pay we pay so much goddamn money in taxes every year. All of us do, except for billionaires. They don't pay shit. No more people. We pay a lot of money in taxes. And then people want to get mad when they try to give taxes back in some form that would benefit us. And they'll say, like, oh, these people are just they're, they're just buying votes. No, you give them money. They're giving you something for that money. It, it'd be like if I just gave if I went to McDonald's 
and you know I wanted a fucking happy meal, and they gave me the whole and they gave me the whole thing, and then you got mad they gave me the whole fucking meal. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you expect them to just give me like two fries after I paid them like five dollars. You know what I mean? It's like no, like I'm, if I have to pay you this money, then I expect something in return. And what we're getting in return in the uh, uh, in our American lives is fucking it, it's sparse, especially compared to other countries. Other countries, their taxes that that are equivalent, they have fucking single payer health care that's paid through by through taxes. They have free college. They have all kinds of other shit that we just don't get. And because we're just used to having this low standard of life in America and just keep overpaying in our taxes and then complaining about it and then getting mad when somebody wants to give you something back. It's like, let's just get some shit back for like what we're paying for, you know? Yeah. The other thing that's left out of this conversation um, is, and I'm going to obviously I use California as the best example of this. Even CSUs, which were always supposed to be the affordable option. And when I say CSUs, for those who don't know, I'm talking about San Diego State, San Jose State, San Francisco State, Fresno State, uh, any of those California schools that have state university, you know, in their title. Um, they were always in, I may say always, like through the 50s, 60s, 70s and even early 80s, usually affordable enough for tuition for you to work a summer and pay for the next year, basically. Um, even on your own, just working a, a retail menial job uh, or working on campus and whatnot, it's ballooned. Like the, the graph goes straight up in our lifetime since the 80s and late 70s on uh, the cost of it. And it's going up again uh, over the course of the next three or four years by like double digits. And yes. so it's not affordable. Well, and, and it's not sustainable. And it doesn't make sense because, to, to me, just the economics alone, having, you know, college paid through by taxes, there's a couple things that are going to happen, all right? And this is automatic. If it's, if it's paid through by taxes, you're going to guarantee that the people that happen to go to college are going to complete it. And then when they do complete it, they're going to get, be guaranteed higher wage jobs. And what's, what's that going to do? That's going to get people to pay more taxes. And that's going to pay for that shit. You know what I mean? Like, this is, this, is, this is not fucking rocket science. This is just basic economics. Correct. It's a po yeah. There's a positive ROI on it completely. But, yeah. It, and I don't even it, fucking like college. I never even yeah, went. I have no <laughs> plans on even going. Yeah. But, you know, um, the other thing is there's, there have been uh, student loan forgiveness in the past. And here's the other thing, too. Uh, it's one of those loans that has these really draconian rules tied to it. Like you can't declare bankruptcy. It follows you forever. Um, you, there's nothing you can do to eliminate that debt other than pay it or die. <laughs> you know, those are your two options. You'll probably die before you pay it You'll in, some cases, in some cases. Yeah, that, and, and that's all by design. The other thing that's predatory about them is that you're talking about a 17, 18, 19-year-old, yes. 20-year-old young person yes a legal adult of, of most uh under most circumstances but here's the thing about being 18 years old you don't know jack shit even if you have lucky enough to have parents and uncles and aunts that you know taught you a little bit about money you still don't know jack shit because you mm -hmm. ain't in the world you know what i mean you don't know about mortgages you don't know about interest rates you don't know how long you don't know how much money you're going to truly make with your major in college after school you got no idea. You don't know if there's no, no fuck guarantee. Yeah, you know, you haven't you haven't been through a recession while well, you've been in the labor market. You don't know shit on shit, but yet you're able to take out a loan for sixty, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand dollars, and you may not pay it off until you're in your seventies. Mm. Come on now. So. Oh, um, sorry. Last thing about the Supreme Court, because they, they, they were going, yeah. going hard as a motherfucker. So some and correct fact check me and correct me. But the way I, I, I've had it explained to me and from what I've read, some fake ass. Um, was it a bakery? Someone no, pretending to a, be. It was a she. She wanted to start making a website for weddings. Yeah, but but hadn't but done she it doesn't yet. Doesn't currently have. Doesn't website have website business for, for yeah for weddings. This but. is all hypothetical, theoretical, 
in your head, I might do this in the future. I'm going to shake my crystal ball. She took a case all the way to the Supreme Court uh, about how she shouldn't have to do that for anybody who's gay, trans, or other <laughs> people, but, you know, religious freedoms, whatever the fuck bullshit she wanted to make up. And the Supreme Court was like, you know what? You you hypothetical business owner, you, you're fucking the right. hell. You you're right. Be- fuck those people. Your hypothetical business could have 100% fucking realistic bigotry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just go, Man, ahead, just go need- ahead and discriminate. Like, it's it's all good. It just, and I mean, it's, it's carte blanche. There's no legal protection. And I want to be really fucking clear here after this ruling for someone to say, I don't like Jews. You can't buy a cake here. Yeah. I don't, you know. I don't like slope. Africans. <laughs> I don't like Mexicans. I, you know, you can't b- buy a toy here. You can't buy a video game here. You can- nothing. Yeah, we are on a downward spiral. <laughs> yeah, no, I yeah they're rolling the clock back. Yeah, and I couldn't stand like the. <clears throat> I hate when people use, you know, the Bible as like a justification for their. They're just like racist, f- homophobic, fucking bullshit. It's like unless you are literally using all the rules of the Bible to live your life, you have no fucking leg to stand on. So if that woman came into that fucking courthouse without a covering on her head and she was wearing blended fabric, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? And it still is not an excuse. We still have laws in America that are anti-discrimination laws, and it is discrimination. No matter how you fucking slice it, it's discrimination. You're saying... I don't want to do something for somebody because they are gay. That's discrimination. All right. It, yeah. it doesn't matter what excuse you put behind it, but whatever. It doesn't fucking matter. It's discrimination. Can I just say this too? What here's what gets me too. You're so fucking bigoted and hateful. You like your fucking hatred more than fucking cash money. Yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> Like, more than money going in your pocket, that's how much you love hate. <laughs> you know? Like, come on. And it's also, it's like, the, the crazy, isn't it, isn't gay marriage federally legal? Yeah. Uh, so this is a, or it's, now. It's a legal, yeah, right. pro- it's a legally protected, you know, you know union. So yeah. how the yeah. fuck yeah. can you discriminate against something that is federally, you know, recognized? Oh, it, they, they keep this six three majority. It won't be long. I'm telling you. And people are people rewind the clock. Save this date. I'm telling you right now. Give it a give it less than two years. Yeah. They gonna knock it all back. Yeah, they're, they're go- it's going quickly. Oh. I mean, they, they've already knocked back a, like a lot of shit in like record fucking shit. time. So they're you know what's on what's played out. Definitely need to take care of some folks. <laughs> what they had talked about when they first became the majority. Someone someone brought up. Um, interracial marriages. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and one oh, yeah. of the justices is like, "Oh, you don't want us in your bedroom. You don't want us just making decision on what's going on or who you marry." Because guarantee you, they'll probably make that reverse that shit. Which is uh, crazy which because love, Clarence Thomas versus, is he's yeah, he's, he, but I'm sure yeah. he would vote, you know, to like end interracial marriages. He, I'm I mean, sure he would. At the, at the time, our the president wasn't an interracial marriage. I mean, even though she looked white, she was. She wasn't an American. I mean, what she's have you not American. She's a, So she's a naturalized American, I guess. Because she married him. That's like she it's married like, him. Yeah. So, yeah. so yeah. she may have dual citizenship. To be honest, I, I don't. Okay. I didn't really care about the first lady, but she or the former, former first lady. First lady. What but is she, she up to? Did have dual, who cares? Who cares? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, she's not. I don't see your picture with Donald, so. She thought they're, care. bro. Show me somebody that cares. Dating, dating her uh, fitness ain't, coach or whatever. Ain't, ain't nobody care. She can probably I, doing B- BBC fucking cockle videos. I, I don't know. I don't care. Can, Go ahead, can I quadruple? Can we quadruple down on some last shitty ass legislation? I don't think this is Supreme Court, but it's still becoming a dangerous fucking trend. Old school ass. Child labor laws are being repealed left and right. Yeah, and it's going to go to the Supreme Court, and they're probably going to be okay with that. And 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 here's what I mean by that: 
because people get all confused. Well, you know, a kid can sell lemonade and kill kid can have a newspaper out. No, 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 that's not what I'm that's talking not about. A goddamn job. Get the fuck out of here. They're, they're not cleaning I'm blood ta- off of fucking slaughterhouses. Exactly. Which they're doing now. I'm yeah. I'm talking about working in slaughterhouses. I'm talking about working in the coal mines. I'm talking about lumberjacking. I'm talking about dangerous occupations where OSHA has to. Uh, do investigations for dead bodies not not a whole lot but some per year or injuries where you've missed a digit and all that things that a 14 year old has no business doing and we knew that 100 years ago but here we go so man we are backsliding like a motherfucker (laughs) yeah man I mean, and if we're going to backslide at least give me my original four loco I want that pineapple flavor you know what I mean that's what I'm (laughs) Damn. <laughs> Damn. Put that Coke back in that Coke. Coca-Cola. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. God damn it. Um, any any last topics? So I think we're winding down. Yeah. All right. I'm going to have to do my RIP last week because somebody kind of big did pass. I put the notes in it, but I didn't type it up. So save, I it yeah, save it for next week. Yeah, I'm going to save it for next week. What you got popping this week, goddamn it, old ninja? Uh, so I'm doing a, a birthday party gig uh, for my little cousin on Saturday. So um, I, we're doing a beach party. I guess we're going to the beach. It's been hot enough recently up here in, in the Bay Area to go to the beach actually now. So I'm going to be at the beach on Saturday doing like a, a little mermaid bir- beach birthday party for an eight-year-old girl. So it's going to be interesting. Then all the parents are going to get drunk once the sun goes down. So we'll see. Hopefully everyone will be home before yeah, the end, yeah. but... Everyone's gonna be joined by the end of the night. It should be. Uh, we're probably gonna play some Mario Party. Nice. I, I have old school Mario Party, like the original, and it plays on my on my. I have a Wii still. We play on my Wii. We play like every week. Nice. But I'm I'm thinking of investing in a Switch because the Switch has it's obviously nice. Zelda games. Yeah. yeah. But it also has like the new the Mario Party like All Stars, where it has every single fucking Mario Party game ever. Yeah, I got it. There you it go. Was game. But also, but also, I'll be able to play like this, you know, uh, uh, Nintendo greats. Like I haven't played any Mario game in like fifteen years, Damn. or more. Who knows? But I, out. I, I might. What was it? You're missing out. There was like a, a really good one. I forget what the fuck it's called, but it's the one where like Bowser comes through. Like he's basically like a like Mister X, oh, or something shit. like that. Like it's it's crazy. I forget the fucking. It's like yeah, Mario. That, is that Odyssey? No, is, not, let me wait, look is that up. WarioWare? No, it, WarioWare no. was 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 hidden when it came out back it's, on the on the queue. It's like one of the, my favorite games, Bowser's Fury. That's what it is. Oh, okay, that is oh, like yeah, one of my favorite that, yeah. Mario games of all fucking time. It's so, so fun, so much one, fun, fun. The one I kind of want to get because my niece was all about it, and I never got it for her. Instead, uh, we got her Just Dance, but she loves Splatoon, and Splatoon is only on fucking Nintendo. Wait, yeah, how old is she? She is thirteen now. You better get that girl playing some goddamn Resident Evil. What the hell? No, she ain't playing. No, <laughs> she can't. No, I bought her Zelda. I bought her the Breath of the Wild, and she never played it. So no. So, but she's she was young there. She's like six then. <laughs> so she's old enough now. So we'll. She should be playing it hopefully. But I'm probably gonna get the OLED version, even though there's rumors of a a newer version coming out in the fall. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, I heard they're yeah, going to be on playing, sale in like on Amazon and for Prime Day. So, when is Prime Day? Uh, the eleventh, like fourteenth, I think. Maybe yeah. Oh, look so it in up. a few days. Yeah, I forget. Yeah, we'll see. But I think it's we'll like three hundred bucks for the LED one. So, I'm not I'm not fully convinced that I'm I'm gonna get a switch yet, but I'm very heavily leaning towards it. I mean, there's also the Steam Deck, so <laughs> not get one of those. But and then uh, I'm gonna be playing a lot more uh, Modern Warfare and uh, some of this Need for Speed, and I should definitely go back to uh, Star Wars. But uh, the boss I was facing, he was beating my ass so bad I had to change games. But we'll see. But mm-hmm. yeah, that's, the worst. that's that's pretty much it for me. Good shit with Blue. What you got? Oh man, there's a bunch of movies that that's dropped recently that was originally in theaters. Like uh, I plan on watching on. HBO. I had to look and see. I was like, I know there's something on HBO Max I want to watch, but uh. Evil Dead Rise dropped on HBO Max last week, which I'm excited about because I mean, I, it's Evil Dead. Like, what what could you go wrong? And the fucking trailer alone was was fucking decent. Uh, Megan is dropped on on Amazon, which is oh. the one with the little girl robot thingy. The 
You guys remember Grope? Uh, what was it called? Oh god, the name was on the tip of my tongue. I just lost it. Uh, something wonder, small wonder. With yeah, the girl Vicky. It, yeah. She was like a robot. Like oh yeah, evil yeah. Version of, evil, it's the evil version of her. So no, I, I hell want to watch that. She's like an upgraded version of Chucky, pretty much. And it was on. So Megan well, was she on. She came out before Chucky. Yeah, but or Megan Vicky did. Yeah, but Megan's been on Peacock for like two months now. So oh, that's you got to pay for Peacock. Well, I guess you got to pay for Amazon too, but. Yeah, I'm about to say, well, you got to pay for almost everything streaming. But something else I'm excited about that just dropped on HBO Max is um, it's Batman, the the Doom that comes to Gotham, and that's the one where it's like the HP Lovecraft, like they got like Cthulhu up in there, and like some other like rich craft shit happening in the background. But it's also like kind of not steampunk Batman, but more like um, like Gaslight District type Batman oh. story. So I'm pretty excited about that. I mean, oh. I saw the trailers for it, and they're pretty fucking cool. Real quick, Blue, did you watch ba- uh, Gotham by Gaslight? Did you watch? It's on HBO Max now, but did you watch it? Uh, y- yes, I did. Yeah, I did. That's the one where um, or what's the name is um, Jack the Ripper. Or what Jack, is it? Yeah, Jack the Ripper or Jack, uh, Mister Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, what it's called right? Yeah, it could be both. I don't know. I haven't seen it yet, but I saw it's on there. But yeah, I did. I did see it. It was it was pretty cool. Okay. Uh, also, I also saw the the Catwoman anime one. But oh, also, yeah. um, I guess DC right now is partnering with. Um, anime studios, so they're gonna read some of their. Con- you remember how like I think X Men or Marvel, Marvel did, did this, yeah. especially with like G Four. They yeah. had the anime version of the characters. Uh, it looks like uh, like the DC is gonna be doing that pretty soon too. And I've seen some of the some of the still images, and it it looks pretty fucking dope. So I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, just my little guy just keeps growing. I mean, he he popped in here earlier, and you heard him talking. Like the kid, like have full on conversations with me now, which is kind of cool. Uh, I haven't introduced him to Teen Titan Go, but he did accidentally stumble across it. Because you, you cannot do that his... and be a better person. I'm just saying. Sing that waffle song with him. Oh uh, man, he uh, he was playing on his tablet and it, and rolled it rolled into Teen Titans Go. And I was like, "Is he watching Teen Titans Go?" And I like I like looked at him. And I was like, "Oh, she is." <laughs> but uh, no, no it's, just, it's just cool just seeing him grow up. But um. Uh, there's something else that's coming up. Uh, still, still job hunt- hunting. I had a job interview today, and the, fuck, the person ever like, basically the person ghosted me. Like I had a, oh, I had an interview at at one fifteen, and like I was waiting for her to call me. She never called me. I sent her an email. I sent her a text message. Fucking nothing. <laughs> oh, bro, that happened to me at Google. Hopefully, hope she's not dead. <laughs> that happened to me at Google. Like the person like set up. We set up an interview time. I was there. I was early. I was ready to do our our because uh, it, it was a it was a the fucking video conference thing uh they didn't fucking do none of that i called left matches did everything you just did and then i i think they got fired because i couldn't find them in the registry so oh, i think shit. they got fired <laughs> so I, I couldn't get hired or they could have looked at your chrome, your chrome history so you know <laughs> oh no unlike prodigy i clear that shit out mm, nope i'm always incognito yeah you incognito make sure you delete everything all certificates fucking everything yeah, I can't get hired in certain states, but that's all good. Um, <laughs> Kronos, what you got? Oh my God. Uh, real quick, um, a new show dropped today, which we didn't talk about because it just dropped today, is uh, Kazazi Moto, which is on yeah. Disney+. Plus. It's an African uh, anthology animated series with different, when anthology means like you know, there's different what directors and animation styles and stuff like that. Just think of like a Star Wars Visions. Yep. Um, yeah, but for like African stories, um, I watched the first. You said one. it's on Disney Plus. It's on Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, watched no the first shit. one today. I thought it was uh, it was pretty good. So oh shit! Hey, wait, wait, is this the one that was made by an African studio? Uh, well, there's a bunch of different African studios. So okay, okay, okay. Oh shit! May have to check it, this shit out. Oh, shit. I I watched uh, the pilot episode. It gave me kind of Wakanda vibes, animated for sure. You know, yeah. and um. Very cool. Yeah, so we'll talk about it more next week because, you know, it just dropped today. So um, don't want to spoil anything. Um, other than that, hey, if you want to be a hero to your kids this summer, buy a slip and slide or a big ass slip and slide <laughs> like I did. Um, we, we got like a, I got one of the ones that like it feels full of air and then it's got like a water slide with like two different things that spray water and shit. It's fucking cool. I wish I had one. You bet your kid. You bought your kid a miniature water park. <laughs> Basically, yeah, she loves it. Um, but the only thing is, like, I'm, I'm dreading like my water and electricity bill. Um, <laughs> it's probably, yeah. probably going to be fucking astronomical. But also, I'm lucky because she's going to swim camp. So, like, during like the normal weekdays, I'm like, nah, because you've already been swimming all day and you're going to be tired. 
There um, you go. But on Saturday, she can, she can play with it again. So that is all I got. Oh, looking forward to Comic Con. Sorry, it's coming oh, yeah, up soon. Yeah, a couple weeks. We will see you guys uh, if you're there. Good shit. Um, I'm still playing Diablo. Like I said, I beat uh, I beat Lilla's fucking ass, uh, and now there's all this shit I got to do to fucking clean up. So I'm gonna be on there for fucking hours and hours. I love playing co-op on that one. It's fucking good. Um, and to be honest, I'm not watching a whole lot of shit other than I'm still trying to slowly work my way through fucking Dahmer. That shit is fucking tragic. Uh, I know it took me took me like months to do it, but that shit is really it's well made and hard to watch have you watched uh vinland saga season two i haven't yet i Dude, haven't okay so i'm just gonna warn everybody about this okay it starts okay. off slow as fuck you're probably not gonna like the first like three four maybe even five episodes okay um but then it picks up and it's just like well, maybe like three episodes but it, just, it gets back to like ultra violence and just like good why are there so many guts laying around like all right <laughs> That one's on my list. Demon Slayer three and four, or three and two and three, I think, uh, are on my list. And then Jujutsu Kaisen comes back this week. Yeah. So, um, can't wait. Yeah, a whole lot of fucking anime and whatnot. So, take us on out, old ninja. All right, you just experienced Black and Black Times Infinity. Infinity. Thank his podcast on the internet. Check us out anywhere. And everywhere with Beats and BTI, it's B-T-H-A-N-B-T-I, anywhere you listen to your podcast. Sometimes some of them will, you'll have to search literally blacker than Black Times Infinity. Check us out every Wednesday, 8.30-ish Pacific Standard Time. Uh, we go live on YouTube and I guess now on Twitch, I guess. I guess we're simul streaming now. New thing. We're leveling up, people. Uh, email us at BTI at gmail.com. Let us know if you have a B and B, Ask B and BTI question or... Uh, put us out. Put us out on Twitter with the hashtag AskBeatsMBTI with the dang question. Uh, we have a Discord. You can email us, like I said, and uh, let us know you want to join. Have a more in-depth discussion with us, or uh, give topic into uh, topic suggestions or whatever, whatever, whatever you want on Discord. It's pretty. It's pretty well organized to get you going. And uh, oh, check out our official website, BeatsHeadProductions.com forward slash BeatsMBTI. Dragons love tacos. <laughs> <laughs> For y'all didn't know.